Simpsons Index, an online spreadsheet that is also a podcast. This is the podcast. Coming to you out of a fucking castle, this is The Simpsons Index, episode 114. Hello, I am your host, Elliot J. O'Neill, and joining me in this fucking castle is Claire Double R. Huzzah! Huzzah! Castle talk. <laughs> yeah, that, that was the theme. And Jordan Frost. Verily! And Danny Rosewell. Hello, I'm Danny Rosewell. <laughs> castle edition. <laughs> and here, as always, except when he's not, BT Calloway. You know, you work hard and you believe in yourself, and you too can one day Airbnb a castle. <laughs> <laughs> and yes, we are in a castle and we're recording The Simpsons Index. What else would you do in a castle? And this is the podcast where we watch and review three episodes of The Simpsons at a time, but there's a twist. Each episode comes from a different decade. How are we doing, fellows and fellowettes? We're in a castle. <laughs> Being in this castle tickles my arsehole. <laughs> uh, oh, wow. Sorry, that was my bad. <laughs> no, so, but yeah, can you tell yeah. me where the magic happens? <laughs> <laughs> we just watched an episode from the HD era. This was season 22, episode 2, Lone Elisa. Get it? First released in October of 2010, directed by Matthew Fawn, written by Valentina El Gaza. In this episode, Grandpa gives the Simpsons family their inheritance early. Which might sound familiar, but trust me, this is a different episode. <laughs> and Lisa decides to use her money to microfinance someone who turns out to be Nelson, who's running a bike workshop. And in the other story, Marge, to impress a bunch of her, I don't know, snipey friends, accidentally uses her inheritance money to buy a handbag, which turns out to be more than she can afford. And then Homer gives her the idea to take it out for a night out of the town and return it. And in liking how well that scheme worked, Homer decides to take it to the nth degree. Guys, what did mm. you think? I think I said before, this is, the, I think, the least notes I've ever written for a Simpsons episode. Such that a done jam-packed the episode. Yeah, there was a bunch of stuff happening in it. I actually didn't mind a lot of it, but most of it I felt like we could have rewritten that better, better, mm. better. And then the very end of it, just like, whoo, yes, yeah, suddenly it's a shit episode, yeah, bro. I, th- I think any good I was getting out of this, it just stopped. Like yeah. the whole episode just, yeah. just finished. I liked it. Oh, Me okay. too. <laughs> Discourse! I, <laughs> I thought it got better. Like, my overall theme is that... For a HD episode, it was incredibly cohesive. The plots were still in character. It actually worked for a change. And the story had a nice beginning, middle, and end that didn't result in complete insanity or nonsense. Just to that, though, I feel like it was beginning, middle, end! That's how it went. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, I can okay. See that. Well, I actually, yeah, thought it started out on rocky ground, but I thought it came into its own at the end. I wasn't a big fan of the Homer story. No, and that's really I, where yeah. I'm yelling end from. It just stops. It's mm. like, Homer, we've exposed you doing this. Oh, running away. Yeah, there's no resolution to that. Does nope. he still owe massive amounts of credit card he owes debt? a couple of thousand dollars to Costington. Oh, now. he's more than that. Like, yeah. all the items, they had at least four figures on all of them. Mm. The things that he bought and yeah. tried to return. Hundreds of thousands of dollars. But the Lisa story, I thought that was so cute. So cute, but again, it just wraps itself up too quickly and ends. I like the direction. I feel like they could have spent more time on it, especially you have to consider this one has the long introduction, a long couch gag, and then spends a long itchy and scratchy episode yeah. at the beginning. Yeah. There it was time a in lot this of time. one. All right, let's uh, start with you, Claire. For better or worse, what is a moment from this episode that stood out to you? The only moment that really stood out to me is when I felt like totally burned by Homer. <laughs> oh, yeah. um, I mean, I feel like it's a really shitty thing to point out, but that's all I can think is that he called me like a real sucker. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. When he's going to return the stuff and the woman at the store's not buying it, and he's like, "When do you end your shift? When's Claire starting? She's a real sucker." And we were just like, <laughs> <laughs> "Yeah." I had like five people turn to me and go like, "Duh, it's you. That's your name." Which is weird. There's only four of us. Or are you counting yourself? I was, I was <laughs> counting myself. <laughs> or maybe I was counting Homer. I don't know. I, yeah. felt, I just felt really attacked. I came here to have a good time. <laughs> but yeah, <Fun> patriarchy. <laughs> How about you, Jordan? What's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? There's a bit where Abe says, I can't play cards anymore because my hands are too shaky. And he then proceeds to show yeah. how his hands are shaky and mm-hmm. the cards all fall out of his hand. And then Marge goes, oh, no, that's not the problem. These cards are too slippery. And then does like 10, 15 seconds of just card tricks. Yeah. I, I like the I idea of it. it. <laughs> no, okay. no, I, I like Dude, the idea that she's going, trying to like, oh, no, no. Going. And then it's just suddenly too good. It went too long, but I like the idea. Yeah. I think it was just like, wow, you're really drawing this out. This mm. just keeps 
going. Then after that long extended card gag where he just has to show us how bad he is at cards, he then goes, oh, there was something about a television show and he just hits the button. It's already playing. And it's like, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's just the same kind of joke of here's the thing I've said, here's me proving it with a visual. It's like it's double telling. It's very annoying. You don't need to do that. Yeah. I mean, you can make the case that since it was the show that he was trying to get for directed, it's on his video that he rewatches his glory days, blah blah blah. But it's still the same thing. That's like, it. Just... What the hell's the point? We heard you say it. We don't need to see it afterwards. Do it at the same time. I think <laughs> it was like meant to be one of those what the fuck moments, and then it's meant to be funny when Homer's just weirdly and then singing Homer's it. Yeah. singing it afterwards. But he's singing so the wrong melody. Catchy. How about you? Danny Rosewell, what is a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? I guess not quite better, not quite worse. It sort of stands out to me for neutral. But when Sk- <laughs> I said better or worse, <laughs> no in betweens. <laughs> when Skinner finds out that Nelson's paying them eleven dollars an hour, and he's yeah. like, "Whoa, that's night janitor money!" tears off the sleeves of his suit, and then like in bursts yep. Principal Schmimor, um, Chalmers, yeah, Super Nintendo Chalmers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and he's already got his arms ripped off, and he's like. <gasps> So you heard about the eleven dollars an hour, huh? And he just like pushes Skinner back in the closet and bolts the door. Which proves that he would be the better employee, you know. He's oh, already absolutely. on Nelson's side if he's doing that shit. Yeah, I don't know how it ended up with Skinner having the job instead of uh, Chalmers. Oh yeah, Chalmers was was he there? No. I feel like Nelson would be loyal to Skinner though. I don't think Nelson and Chalmers have that much interaction at all. Mm. But Nelson and Chalmers can bond over picking on Skinner. Yeah, but you want the person who has direct power over you under your thumb, not the person who has power over them. That's too many steps removed. Yeah, that's like his power grandfather. Also, Chalmers might have too much power. He might overthrow Nelson at some point, whereas Uh, Skinner is like the typical lapdog. Yeah, even in a leadership role, he's still a subordinate. Yeah. (laughs) I did like the scene of him later on being like, oh, we're going to meet up for brunch with Kearney. (laughs) If I'm up. (laughs) How about you, BT? Yeah, no. Um... Okay, honestly, <laughs> it's just the ending that really stands out to me for the worst. It just kind of stops. It Which Very ending? stunning. <laughs> in both of them, I mean, like I said, Homer's story just ends with he gets exposed and runs away, and that's mm. the end of it. Mm. There's no fallout from him being in any kind of debt. I mean, I do prefer the Lisa storyline, but it just the fact that it just stops. There's nothing about um, Nelson decides to go back to school or pay back the money or anything. You don't find out what happens after all these people are upset. No, he decides to go back to school. He, yeah. he well, says that a little too directly. He's like, you yeah. know what, Lisa, maybe I do need more school. Except my problem with that was she was all, you need to go back to school, but she's introducing him to all these successful college dropouts, and it's like... High school's a different thing. Mm. Uh, elementary school. Well, Ele- you- elementary school, thank you, yeah. How are you going to drop out of college if you don't finish high yeah. school in elementary? That, that, that could have been a great like, but, uh, line just, for her to take. The end of that story, it was very rushed, and then we go into this you know, little roller rink scene, which should have been nice, but I was just a little too, oh, okay, we're done, aren't we? I mm. did not like the roller rink scene. For me, that one scene dropped five points in my esteem, in my mm. eyes. Wow, five points. We've only got a six-point scale. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm going to have to invent some new rankings today. Oh, wow. What about the episode stood out to me, though? I'm going to say it's just a shame that Marge was sort of dropped from the Marge story because we mm. have this, like, cute little moment of her sort of getting the bag under pressure of, uh, you know, all Good her song. friends and yeah. stuff. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> and that whole scene with her in the restaurant trying to avoid yeah. stuff, yeah. I fucking yeah. love that. I do really like the bit where Homer's going off at her for spending $500 on a bag, fair enough. But then she's got that, it's okay, I'll return. He, like, sees how dejected she is for owning something nice. That He's like, really sweet. Well, why don't we just go out for one night, you and that bag, we'll go out to the nicest place. I really like that. That's very... And then they did go out to a real nice restaurant. Yeah. yeah. He didn't take her to Greasy Joe. You don't see Sweet Homer terribly often, but I really like that as a moment. He was like, oh, I can see this is important to you. Come on, let's go. So, Beej, where was the heart of this episode? Hey, 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 you're getting (laughs) too many questions ahead. I'm still on my question. Uh, (laughs) Yeah, and I just really wish that Marge was sort of more a part of this Homer story, which once he discovered that you can return shit... It just became all about him, and I thought that was really shitty. There was this yeah. big moment where he was like, mm. I am making the episode about me now! <laughs> <laughs> it's the Homer show. Yeah, I agree. Like, keep it with maybe even the both of them, so maybe they yeah. get a bunch of stuff, throw a big dinner party with stuff they're not allowed to use. I do like the line later when Lenny and Carl show up, and he's got the, the doormat. And he's like, come on in, don't wipe your feet. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, that was great. Yeah. Uh, it would have been really kind of interesting to have, like, 
the montage scene of Homer like compulsively buying more and more things yeah. and like Marge like frantically scrubbing them clean and returning them desperately mm-hmm. a little while he keeps bringing more in like oh, in, a, in a truck it load while she's desperately like running them out to the re- refund load yep yep that was about it so play count how many times before tonight have you seen this episode never I haven't either Never. At least the once, perhaps the tons. <laughs> Gets in a castle and it's all tons. <laughs> or even possibly thrunts. Hey, look at little Lord. <laughs> yes. Yeah, I've said before that seasons 20 to 22, I actually watched a fair bit and repeat. And this is an episode that I return to quite a bit. And I think it was mostly the Lisa story that was bringing me mm. to it because so I am adorable. It is yeah. adorable. But let's talk about some wacky shit. Was this a particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? Not Yeah. Usually. There was actually one wacky moment with Wiggum and Lou, and Lou was undercover with Fat Tony. Yeah. And they had did that little relationship fight thing that they do sometimes. I didn't hate it initially. It just went on. But yeah, they just dragged it. They just, just need to make it a little bit snappier. Like, so this is how it is. Every time you go undercover, you suddenly start ignoring me. That would have been fine. Yeah. I but liked the bit where he was going. like, oh man, that would have looked so good in slow motion. Shame yeah. we had to see it in real motion. I liked that line, but I think it was just such a shame that then it was like, oh, I'm married to the Dunn's daughter. And it's like, your cover's already been blown, dude. Like, yeah. we're not... Yeah, when he said, I've got bigger problems, Chief. Like, I thought that was going to be like, you just... Yeah. 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 It was yeah. nice to say, I've got bigger problems. <laughs> yeah, why wasn't that the point of that sentence? I yeah. think that was the point. It was the thing you don't expect. Yeah. Actually, the bigger problem is he obviously got Fat Tony's daughter pregnant, like, eight months ago Mm because she's She's ready to pop pop. yeah Yeah. they have been playing the long con and wiggum just fucked it all up (laughs) calling for backup at the buffet that's pretty funny by itself because especially i thought it was going to be a cheap fat joke with homer going we better go quick wiggum's making his move but then they use the fact that wiggum's a cop to like tie into that yeah Yeah. he's loaded up his plate as much as he can it's not like he's got a wheelbarrow or anything he's like need backup (laughs) i really thought when he took that first slice of lasagna it was going to be like he put that on a plate and then take the whole tray i was glad that it wasn't yeah First time I ever saw that was in a Donald Duck cartoon where his cousin Gus comes to stay with him and he slices Gus. it. Yeah. And, Gus Duck. And I think he was a goose. Yeah. Gus Goose? <laughs> Gus Goose, his cousin from Our a duck. D- uh, anyway, he slices one bit of chocolate cake and takes the whole rest of the chocolate cake and Donald's like, Haha, this guy's fat. Um, That's his duck from another fuck. <laughs> Whoa. Well, this guy, this guy wins. And yeah, just a wackiness as well. Yeah, Marge like avoiding all the stuff. That was so awesome mm-hmm. like yeah the wine and the chocolate fountain and then the woman at the help desk and the candles as well yeah, yeah. oh yeah <laughs> she never gets nothing on nothing but you know it would have been the one time right yeah mm-hmm. yeah and just homer take me home yeah really sweet there was a lot of heart in this episode oh, yeah. and i also like that he didn't ruin the bag by doing something truly awful. He was like, okay, yeah. honey, just one more shrimp. Like, And he bit it, and that was it. He that's yeah. it. He did he nothing stupid. He didn't wasn't fuck like, up. Yeah. Dude did not fuck up for once. I mean, he did. He edit messily. <laughs> he he edit, edit messily. Yeah. Some food just gets et messy. <laughs> he did fuck up by going insane with refund merch yeah. lust. Yeah, that was the wackiness of the episode that I wasn't a fan oh, of. Oh, his stupid Ed Hardy t-shirt that he was wearing. God, he looked like a douchebag. So someone wearing an Ed Hardy t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> what about Boom Trump? Shakalaka <laughs> from downtown? Something else wacky: the fact that Bill Gates, Mark Zuckerberg, and Richard Branson would all be at a convention center in Springfield. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> wow. Running, no running their own booths. <laughs> yeah. The other wacky moment: the Facebook gags. Yeah. Mark Zuckerberg, which were pretty average yeah. and they referenced when facebook would do the like claire is and then you yeah. filled in the blank like yeah. how old is that <laughs> that is like 2010. 2007 <laughs> no even like earlier surely yeah i think it was around then because like i go through my memories every day to like delete old shit that i'm not super proud of anymore and, <laughs> and i did notice that yeah i was doing the third person talking as recently as like 09 i think yeah, so the guest star, there were a lot of guest stars in this episode, but yeah, one of them being Mark Zuckerberg. How'd you think he did? Oh, that was actually him. Yeah, dude. Yeah. Dude, I gotta say, like, I don't like the guy. Like and subscribe, but <laughs> I think his, like, voice acting was great. Like, really, like, cartoon voice acting. Well, I was trying to figure out, was he trying to sound like a robot, or does he just sound like a robot? It, he just sounds like a, a robot. I did you he... watch the fucking court trials? <laughs> yeah, I guess so. But I feel like he was nervous, as yeah. nervous as a robot can get. Yeah. <laughs> 
I think he was trying to be flat. Yeah. To be fair, yeah. I think it's hard to tell. Obviously, well, yeah, I, he was doing like that stilted delivery as like you type a status update. Yeah, so yeah, yeah like yeah. we yeah. kind of talking to yourself as you write the words. He didn't really have any jokes or anything to you know sell. So look, I thought the few lines he did have that weren't. Facebook typing on my computer and, and saying what I'm typing. Yeah. I thought he had good delivery. I thought yeah, he was he's like, all like Bill Gates, drop out. Yeah. Richard Branson, drop, drop out. out. Oh my God. I'm speaking with inflection and drama to my things. Not a lot, but a little. Way more than Elon Musk, for example, who oh. was like, you know, a lot of the, especially the sports announcers and a bunch of the other people that aren't actors don't know how to emote, how to mm. emote. In their emotion with the Indeed. inflections of their voice. <laughs> There's so much to do with acting. Yeah. Hacking. Beautiful. So the other wacky thing I want to mention before we move on is Homer taking the his story to the nth degree. Like, after he realised that they successfully returned the bag, then the next scene of the story, you see the house is full of shit with price tags on it. Mm-hmm. And the thing that bugs me about this is he didn't use any of it. He was just, like, playing with the boxes and shit and, you know, don't step on the rug. At least they went out with Marge's bag. Yeah, exactly. And so that's what made this story feel too rapid fire is Mm. that there was no escalation to it. It just went to the nth degree. The whole reason. They went to the beautiful restaurant and... Asia to Cuba. Nice. Mm, Pretty funny. Um, Fusion. (laughs) And the receptionist there just saw them and went, ugh, this way, (laughs) and put them right next to the toilets. That was great. And, like, there was no misunderstanding. They knew, like, oh, we are the lowest of the low in this place, but at least it's a nice place. And as soon as the lady saw Marge's bag, they moved her to a nicer table. So... My thought would be that when home was like, no, 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 can't you see? Like, you can get stuff and rent mm, it, essentially. Yeah. And, then and yeah. look like the upper class mm. and get the upper class things. So I was hoping he would buy a bunch of stuff like beautiful dresses or get their, you yeah, know, like yeah. uh, suits and things like that. And then they'd go out and try to scam like oh, rich stuff out that of like sounds people. like so much more yeah. fun. Mm. Mm-hmm. That's it. Cut in front of the queues in nightclubs and things. Mm. Yeah. Oh, that is so good. Kind of like Marge's mangled Chanel suit, but you know. Yes. Yeah. Because yeah, the only two scenes you get after the restaurant scene is when Homer's home is filled with the shit, and he brings Lenny and Carl over, and then when he's returning it and he gets caught, uh, it just didn't feel worth it. Although I did like the line of Lenny going, "What with the film on the TV? I can't tell if this is an old Seinfeld or an old old Christine." Yeah. That was just fun wordplay. Yeah. <laughs> so how about the heart of this episode? Did any of you people feel the bar bumps? I'm going to say yes. I thought Homer was really lovely to Marge. She was clearly so hurt by being judged by Mm. those fucking, like, Julio, the gay friend slash gay enemy. Mm. And, like... Sassy gay friend or scheming gay enemy. Oh, I know. Grown. Yeah. 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 The Julio, I felt like that was so reductive. Like... Yeah. He's like a wacky mascot. He came in and went, look how gay I am. Yeah, I'm maybe your friend or your enemy, but I'm still gay. <laughs> like, I don't know. But like that whole scene, I really felt how judged she was mm. feeling and how she'd backed herself into a corner by buying the $50 bag. Well, especially because sudden- she thinks these women are ripping on her for not being able to afford a $50 bag. Yeah. And she's like, hey, we make good money and all that. And then she's like accidentally dug herself into a hole. Oh my God. Can I just say though, one thing that, it set up a lot that mm. most of the other women in Springfield are not nice to Marge. Yeah. yeah. But I really hate that because, like, she's lovely. She's a mm. lovely she's person. Wonderful. She's really What's sweet. What's there to dislike about Marge? Homer. Yeah, well, <laughs> yeah. that has been proven before that he has been the one that scared off her friends. Yeah. Yes. However, that doesn't justify any sort of behavior of, like, Hibbert's wife coming up and be like, mm, forgot your husband wasn't a doctor. Like, fuck off, bitch. Which, yeah. by the way, Julio goes, oh, you're so burned. Her name, Hibbert's wife, is Bernice. Burn. There's something there. Don't There's a the, joke there. Don't eat the crab dip. Yay, yay. <laughs> I just wish they would like lay off all the women hating on Marge all For the real. time. Like she Marge needs to have at a least break. a couple of friends, like yeah. regular friends that like, are never seen being horrible to her. Her only friend is Ruth. Ruth is that the one? Yeah, yeah. Ruth, yeah. yeah. Danny Beach. We reviewed Marge in Chains last time on the podcast, yeah. and people were being so unnecessarily horrible mm. in her to her in that, and that's a classic era episode. Yeah, yeah. not a great classic era episode, but still. She's the sweetest lady in town. Yeah, and they just wanted to fucking put the bitch on ice and send her to jail and shit. As far as the heart of this episode goes, <laughs> it's just a shame that, again, Marge was dropped from this story because yeah. you can have 
so much more heart to mind from that. Totally. Mm-hmm. Man. This is why I'm really annoyed we don't have the one where they rent nice things and try to pass off as yeah. fancy people. Because yeah, I, that was think a good I would idea. enjoy watching Marge having the giddy thrill of doing something a little. Oh, I know. Watching I know. Marge like get in on a scheme for once. Yeah. All right. You know what else really gave me the hearty farties? <laughs> <laughs> Lisa Nelson Lisa Nelson and like Corky being like no it wasn't Jimbo it was the mm. other guy it was Kearney. Dolph Kearney. Dolph oh. being like Jimbo was the vig in this episode yeah he was such a like a, a matchmaker being like yeah I bet you and Nelson want to ruin no, yeah. I, I took it the other way because he obviously said to Nelson oh she'll try and come after you once she knows you've got money I took it as a negative thing oh, oh man, no I no thought that way. was total throwback to date Dude, with density she still yeah, likes yeah. you man she still likes oh, you I, I you thought got, it was more in, like, you, a, got a chance, bro. you know, now you've got money. I bet she'll come crawling back. Oh, and you should yeah, say no. That's how I read it. Really? As well. Oh, man. No. You seem so supportive to me. Lisa ain't no gold digger. <laughs> the thing that I didn't, I guess, understand, and I guess because like, I feel like I've watched a slightly different episode to everyone else because I'm like not sure I like this at all. But anyway, the point being is that at the end, Lisa's like, we're just friends, right? Like, yeah, friends. And Lisa's then going, well, can I hold your hand? And it's like, yeah, for balance. Yeah, for balance. Yeah. I don't know where they're ending like, up or what they're trying to say. You're not reading fine. it? So, oh, so she was on, kind of half flirting. Yeah, yes. I think that was really cute. Yeah. What I read there was them both sort of liking the other, but pretending not to. Mm. And then they're like, yeah, we should hold hands for friend related reasons. Ha 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 ha. It was like the thinnest of charades of two people who both like each other. I I've always liked Lisa and Nelson. I've always liked. We the call them kids, Lelson. You know? Lelson. Like like Nisa. Brangelina. Nisa. <laughs> I was gonna say Simpsons. It sounds hey, like an affordable car. Nisa. I like Simpsons. <laughs> <laughs> I've always liked it, like, you know, when he holds the... Oh, the fence off? Oh, the yeah. fence back for Lisa Nelson. Nelson, yeah. yeah. You know, so I've always liked that, that they've still peppered a little mm. bit of actual, like, pleasantry, like, a little bit yeah. of mutual respect. Civility and between I the think two. also Nelson as a character has changed significantly from the early days and has been fleshed out a lot more. And in oh, this yeah. episode specifically, they had a little bit of a throwback to him, like, being a bit rude, hey Dingus, your bike's ready, but saying it in such a like happy, polite way yeah. that it didn't even come across as an insult, more like a nickname. Oh man, Lisa kept coming in, being like, "Be polite, be nice, do this, do that, do the other," Backseat and Nelson driving. is just like, "These are all great advice. I'm totally on board with listening to whatever you have to say." Lisa yeah, who's walking exactly. for no reason. Even the fact that they're kind of quite happy to be like, "Yeah, we're friends," and Nelson actually listens to, like you said. Yeah. I think it's really sweet, and I did like that end part. Lisa did have to prompt you to say, now be nice, and he was he was probably going to be nice to Martin anyway, but because he kind of said, now everyone thinks you're a dork, so here's what we're going to do to yeah. make you look cooler. <laughs> so this is what I loved about the story and the arc of this episode, and this is where I found the heart and what I loved about it, is that Nelson got a big degree of confidence from Lisa's investment in him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Then he proved himself to be a really good businessman, and then, like, you're really proud as Except an audience. Except the glue bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah, man. But I mean, he does it by being himself. He doesn't sugarcoat these things like, oh, what can I do for you, kind say? He's all, hey, dingus, everyone thinks you're a dork. Here's what we can change about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gonna paint your pink bike black. We're gonna raise the seat. Trust me, it's slimming. And change this basket to no basket. (laughs) Also, I think it was really cute that Ralph showed up and was like, I want my money. And he's like, I'll give you back what you gave me. And obviously he's accepted payment from Ralph yeah. of a shoebox yeah. with like yeah. some pine cones <laughs> and, and a bird's nest. And, and, a yeah. tooth. and a tooth, probably mill houses. <laughs> what I was thinking as well was Lisa learning that other people's life path is different from her own. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And even though they did sort of go, well, actually, Nelson, you know, this is elementary school you're dropping out of. Maybe you need a little more schooling than this. She didn't rub it in his face. It was more just a mutual understanding of going, well, maybe he's not going to be in college and that's okay. But he also went, maybe I do need a little bit more education before I can successfully run this business and yeah. make yeah. it profitable. Because he seemed genuinely upset. You know, it wasn't out of shoddy work, really. It was just out of a misunderstanding, a misunderstanding. of material. Like, that's it. If he'd been better educated, that would have been a successful enterprise. Exactly. So I did like that the lesson learnt was a lesson on both sides. Oh, yeah, yeah. There was a total compromise from Nelson's part as well. And like him realising his mistake, and it was so good that was Skinner was there for that. And he's like, hmm, this epoxy you've been using is not water-soluble. I had to really think of the words then. I'm on very much on Nelson's IQ level. <laughs> 
<laughs> <laughs> Some sticky stay stay. All bye bye. <laughs> it's a good way to explain it as well. <laughs> but I still love the little heart moment for that in me is when he goes, Well, I've got a little bit of money left over and I'd like to spend it on you. And I just yeah. thought that was so cute. Yeah. yeah. So uh, cute. But Jordan's anal corner. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so he did that with like the whole crowd of people like asking for refunds. Like That's how yeah. embezzling works, dude. Come on. You know business. Also, oh, he shit. still is the school bully and those are all dweebs. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. they just be like, here's your refund. <laughs> yeah. Punched <him>. Nice. <laughs> yeah. It is after him paying eleven dollar an hour wages, also mm. doing up his garage with like slat walls and stuff. Oh my god, and his business was called Snot Wheels. Yeah. Oh yeah. so good. Ultimately though, guys, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Sure. Yes. Pretty much. Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Did it feel, feel like an episode feel? of The Simpsons? Did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? Oh, come on. Do you feel? <laughs> Love it. Dude, do I'm you digging feel? It. Ep- <laughs> any episode that we can sit and talk about the heart and actually have something to say, mm. that's a Simpsons episode to me. Like, I mean, I've got my fundamental problems with how the story, Homer story rolled out, but Claire, you said it at the top of the show. No one was really out of character in this episode. Nope. No, like there are definitely things I want to change, but I just really liked that... It wasn't a bunch of just random throwaway garbage jokes. It was actually plot. It was actually character-based. And aside from the Homer story, I think, dropping off a little bit too much, everyone's lesson made sense to their character. Yeah, for real. I'm with you on that one. But yes or no, would you watch this one again? Yeah, I would. Maybe. I think I would. Maybe. (laughs) <laughs> I would, and I think I might watch it in the context of a playlist. So what playlist does this go in? Business. Lisa and Nelson episode. Yeah, put this with Date with Density and the one you mentioned before. Lisa, Nelson. Nelson's mum's nipple tassels twirling. Oh, that was yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. There's the one where she's in the morning attire oh, yeah. and also twirling in nipple tassels. Oh, remember the one where like Nelson's mum walks off and Marge is like, try not to have intercourse on the way back home jesus christ really <laughs> yeah fuck yeah. a yeah. duck yeah what about ones where there's about five cameo celebrities shoehorned in that do nothing um you have to narrow that down <laughs> well that's I, like half the series at i this was point. thinking of zucker brandon banson branson and shanson no, no, i know that yeah but branson and gates didn't have any speaking lines though that's true so you mean technically they weren't actually cameos or did they play themselves? Silent. They were cameos in the same way that Teller was. Nutella? <laughs> sure. <laughs> Pen and Nutella. <laughs> it was um Sorry. It was an itchy and scratchy episode. Which... Oh yeah, yeah, we get an itchy and itchy scratchy scratch thing. Playlists. Um just to segue out of the playlist, but first mentioning, yeah, pair this with Lisa versus Malibu Stacy when grandpa also gives him yeah. the inheritance. Yeah. Sorry, did you have something to say then? No, I was just going to be a shit because we were like, pair this with a nice Chardonnay. <laughs> <laughs> a chilled oh, Or the ones where they spend the night in the haunted thing and everyone gets hundred bucks to spend. Oh, yep. Yeah, the Hi. Simpsons getting money. I was about to say, pair this with the other time Grandpa gave them their inheritance early. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was saying. The oh, Malibu sorry. Stacey one. I wasn't paying attention. That's okay. That's what <laughs> Or we could pair this with or... the other one where Grandpa gives them the money. No, Chag. Why don't we pair this with the other one where Shag steals the joke I was trying to tell that you already hey! told? What about the Malibu Stacy episode? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> That's a good idea. Fuck and it. we're back. <laughs> but to your point, Jordan, yeah, the Itchy and Scratchy parody at the start, which was P.U., which was meant to be an up parody. Yeah. What'd you guys think of this? Hated it. My literal first note mm. on this episode is, don't ruin up, you cunts. <laughs> my big question from this, so Scratchy kills both Itchy and Mrs. Itchy, Indiscriminately, Almost. is Scratchy just Itchy a racist? Scratchy and Mrs. Scratchy. Look, shut up. <laughs> now nah, you got the you got, you got the jam going on. Point is, is Itchy <laughs> racist? Because he's just killing cats indiscriminately. Is it a ra- is oh. he a speciesist? Is he eugenicist? Maybe. The thing I didn't like about this was it didn't feel like up. Yeah. I know yeah. they were sort of taking out like the first fifteen minutes of up with the you know the relationship with the, the two old. Bit. But it doesn't really feel like up if you don't do the whole balloon thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It actually took me a second to realize that it was an up reference. I think they could have done a few more 
choice moments. For example, like the handprints on yeah. the house. They didn't really stretch the montage out. I didn't the, like the, the coin bottle was fine. Mm. That was I do like parody for yeah. 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 That was funny. But then Itchy like killing them doesn't have much to do with up. Yeah. Like he it kills cuts them out and too well, quick. I yeah, he should have been like the, the wife died and then he's scratchy's up in the house and then you know he gets the balloons shot out or something. Like yes. I don't know. BT, what would you change? We've already talked about it. I like Claire's idea of sticking with them trying to be fancy vibe. Yeah. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Having yes. a point to the Homer story, I suppose. Wrap up Lisa's story a bit more as well. You have time in this episode if you just cut it from the unnecessary long open, long couch gag, long inchy and scratchy episode. Danny, what would you change? Still thinking about how to wrap up the Lisa episode. Just working off the Claire thing. Grandpa's closeout speech where he sits at the table with everyone and is like, so everyone, what did you do with your $50? And she's like, I had a wacky adventure. And he's like, I had a different wacky adventure. And he's like, I had a third adventure. It felt like it was doing one of those Pulp Fiction multi-stories mm. but they didn't do that they didn't yeah, do the multi-stories that would, fun, yeah. that would have been more interesting to kind of have different threads going a bit more yeah. Bart's thready Bart's $50 Homer's $50 yeah I really would have yeah. liked to see more of Gil walking up the down escalator <laughs> oh I bet it's 11 o'clock I bet it's 11 o'clock oh it's 9.15 <laughs> so I feel like this whole episode should have been a little more interweavy mm. yeah. counter to that or possibly in conclusion to that I feel like the Homer slash Marge episode they should have collided those two worlds because one episode is about buying things and demanding refunds and the other one is about being mm. a businessman and everyone suddenly demands refunds yeah. there should have been some sort of crossover at the end there but it did not but it did not jordan what would you change okay spitball and homer has to pay back all the money that he owes for yep. all that stuff to do that he works for nelson You've just Ooh. stolen it. He Claire, uh, great idea. He, Claire. No, well, actually, no. What Claire, I was going to say. Claire, 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 Claire. Oh, Jordan, just let her have this one. <laughs> Claire, Claire. She's a psycho. She'll give her a refund to anybody. <laughs> Sorry, man. Come on. So he has to pay back all the money. So he decides to start his own business, requests a micro loan. Okay. Nelson is successful. He decides to pay it forward. Yep becomes Homer's sponsor and, you know, is then able to boss him around essentially like Lisa didn't do to him. And then that kind of wraps up. Homer has consequences for all his shitty behavior. And then Nelson has like the altruistic kind of, you know, side to him shown as well. I really like how you built on my idea. (laughs) Oh, Jesus. Claire, what would you like to change? Oh, I've already had my time in the spotlight tonight. <laughs> I think we all know that my idea was the best idea. <laughs> oh my God, Jordan's face. I just... <laughs> just fallen. <laughs> we love you, buddy. We really... <laughs> yeah, I think I've said it. I really want to steamroll Homer's story and like make it about Marge again. And yeah, mm, of course. Steam trolls. <laughs> <laughs> Steamed hands. <laughs> Despite the fact they are obviously, obviously. baked. <laughs> like, this episode could be solved by, yeah, trimming Couch Cad, trimming the Itchy and Scratchy. Itchy and Scratchy didn't have anything to do with the episode. Trimming the grandpa stuff as well. It's all about, again, just waiting the story where it really needs it. Because they just speed through the motions, I feel like. And to unsatisfactory levels with the Homer story. And you really want to know more about the Lisa story. So, yeah, that's what I change. Guest stars of the episode. So we already went over Mark Zuckerberg. Mohammed Yunus appeared in this episode as himself. Click my nose. Yeah. Oh, that was so that awesome. That was very funny, I admit. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think that was the biggest laugh in the room. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay, I'll sit yeah. still. Oh, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> okay, <laughs> goodbye. That little sneaky Nobel Peace Prize winner. And Chris Hansen was playing himself in this episode, the star of To Catch a Predator. No, no, no. no. To Catch a, a Credit, credit whore. whore. Yeah. Yeah. That was an okay-ish pun. Could have just said creditor. I do like that That's Homer true. called out they'd have to sign a release to get on this show. Yeah, but then Homer goes, bah! and then he comes back. When's this? There's a party, and it's like it's too yeah, long, and it's yeah, the yeah. fucking Homer show. And Three bites just... of the apple, man. You always mm. got to go back for more. Mm, that was not a delicious apple. <laughs> <laughs> what am I talking about, Jordan? Any other notes? 
I did like Elisa's thing of saying, people who don't finish college end up earning 3% less than people who do. Yeah. It was very Lisa. <laughs> I liked Skinner's line of, we've got to get Nelson back to school. Why? I mean, nurples are returning to their usual <laughs> non-purple color. Lunch money is actually getting to the cafeteria. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did a great like that. I didn't like the line of Mr. Largo is like, oh, my Wizard of Oz bike broke mm. in the middle of the Pride Parade. Nelson's what like, what parade? What kind of pride? Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't matter. Fix my back. Yeah, I didn't like that. Um, no, I, I wasn't liked, a fan. I liked the sign gag when they go into the entrepreneur's hall and there's one for King Thong Big and Tall Bikini Wear. Wow. <laughs> yeah, boy. Uh, did you happen to get the number? <laughs> <laughs> And my last one was I liked the charities that Lisa was thinking of doing before she oh, went yeah. to the thing, which was Parrots Without Partners, <laughs> <laughs> People Second, Seals on Wheels, and then Seals, Seals on, on Wheels. wheels. Yeah. <laughs> BT, any other notes? I do like Grandpa's Slide on Marge, where it's like, oh, Marge, you couldn't have fun if you were a monkey on a banana boat. <laughs> like, wow. That's good, and I kind of want to steal that. Yeah, I want to use that. Yeah. Time for my final notes. Now it's time, and now it's time for his final, final notes. notes. Elliot's final, final notes. notes. Final notes. I also kind of liked the goat in the first ad as well. Oh, the yeah. goat. Yeah, and, now I didn't mind it. and now apparently I am a girl. Ooh. And I do like the cut to Lisa and it's still giggling. Yeah. <laughs> there was a little too much giggling for me. I think a little too much on shot, but I like that it keeps going when you cut back to Lisa to imply that it just keeps going. Mm. Yeah. But mm. us holding on it is not funny for some reason. Reminds me of that thing about the orange. If this orange had been born a man, he would have invented a cure for cancer and just won a Nobel Priest Prize. <laughs> But alas, he is but an orange. Noble Priest <laughs> Prize? Yes. Yeah. Sure. Okay. And I like something about Millhouse, like going, oh, I've got a bitchin' bike now. Hot cross buns. <laughs> Nobody can make fun of me now. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right, it's time to rank this thing. On the Simpsons Index, we rank using our six-point scale, which starts on the bottom at... Failure. Maybe if the episode was just meh, you give a participant. But for the positive rankings, we got OK Bronze, Good Silver, Excellent Gold, but for the best of the very best, you give the coveted Cubic Zirconia. I'm going to... Slow it down, man. Remember to breathe. I'm going to go first. Let me show you how it's done. <laughs> I want to actually give this a silver because the way we've been talking about it is making me feel really positive of the episode, but I know how I was feeling in the moment. It's such a bronze. Like, the <laughs> it got off to a rocky start. The Lisa storyline saved it for me, but the Homer storyline was really dragging it down from silver. That is my feelings. Jordan, you are next. I think, am I just tired? Because I just I didn't cranky? feel like I was enjoying it during the episode. There are some bits I liked, and some bits I'm just like, yeah, it was, it was okay. I didn't... Yeah, like, I think Homer was a real jackass. And I could say, I'm like, oh, God, he's going to take this too far and it's just going to be really cringy. I will say it's jackass Homer, not jerkass. Though. Yeah. Mm. I didn't love it. It's on the verge of bronze and participant. And I just think I have to give it a participant. I'm sorry. That's okay. Danny, what do you reckon? I'm going to give it a silver. I enjoyed it. I had fun. I walked off and I was like, Haha, this was fun. Oh, I enjoyed this. And... Even though I do have a lot of ideas to improve, and I think I want to sit down and like ballpark a couple more because I reckon we could really improve this. I'm smiling, man. We had fun talking about it. There was a lot of heart in it. The heart ones really get me. You mm. know, there's so many of these fucking HD episodes that feel like fucking whiteboard episodes to me. You know, mm. and this had a cohesive plot. Both threads had start, middle, end. Both sides had like problems, overcame them. Everyone learned a little something. It's not a game, but it's definitely silver game. All right, Claire. If The Simpsons was purely HD era episodes, yeah. this would be getting a silver. From the small pool of what I've seen of HD era, I think they're generally pretty garbage. And it's very rare for me to move off failure, I think. <laughs> <laughs> so this has done quite well for itself. I do think I have to go with bronze, though. I felt like I really enjoyed it while I was watching it. But it's just there's too many little things about it that were just very bland to me mm -hmm. there wasn't enough laughs to sort of push it over the edge to being a really enjoyable episode it was okay there's nothing wrong with it if you watch it you'll have a fine time and beach finish off the pentagram i am gonna go straight out participant it's okay i think it's a high participant main problem is it just has such an abrupt end homer's story doesn't even have an ending it just stops and there just weren't enough jokes for me to really have a lot of good... I stopped taking notes about halfway through this one because I felt there was nothing for me to write down. Again, a high participant. I'm hoping this averages out to maybe a dull bronze shiny participant. 
but um i'm not sure <laughs> yeah it's a complex All right, one let's do some math one five minute argument about math later so this will average out into being a dull bronze, and it's actually the third dull bronze to get a silver in its rankings. Wow. We also had mm. Kill the Alligator and Run, which you gave a silver BT. And I defend. Yeah, not a good episode. It's fine. And also Friend with Benefit with your brother uh, BT mm. gave a silver. Uh, yeah. PT. <laughs> PCA. 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 Yeah. So that's fun and weird. Although dull bronze, I'm not comfortable with that ranking. I think having a such a silver bronze participant spread is really showing the discourse of this episode, which mm, is yeah. what we like to do on the Simpsons. Why don't Index. you watch it at home and let us know? Now, before we move on, is that reputation justified? Is, is that, that reputation justified? You were sharp. Yeah, I'm sorry. Rowan Kaiser of the AV Club. Kaiser stole our damn number for 20. <laughs> he sure did. <sighs> he gave this episode a B minus. So actually, that's roughly where we were at on that yeah. one. Yeah. Looks like the Kaiser doesn't have a lot of bad ideas, huh? <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I know <laughs> either. I chase that Kaiser for diggity six miles. He says spending time with the Simpsons tends to make me happy and nothing about this episode was particularly terrible. Yep, that's, that's true. That, yeah, yeah, that's one hundred percent right. Mm. Even though we've all ranked it completely different things, yeah, this is exactly the description Nothing about of how it. It's terrible, Kaiser. You can keep our word for twenty. <laughs> All right, so that does it for Lona Lisa. Now we're going over the teens era where we're going to watch Mo and Elisa. Is this a title themed series? Maybe. I love it. Yeah. I love it. We'll be back. And we are back, and we just watched our teens era episode. This was season 18, episode 6 Mo and Elisa. First released in November. <laughs> First released in November of 06, directed by Mark Kirtland, written by Matt Warburton. Is Matt Warburton related to Patrick Warburton? We'll find out later. He better be. No, no. I don't want to bring Pat down like that. I don't think there's more than two people with the same surname in all of the world, so I probably. So. I mean there's not in this room, so And especially not in yeah. the show we watched, The Simpsons. Yeah. <laughs> in this episode, Lisa discovers that Mo has a talent for writing, but when Mo gets all popular with the writing circle, he doesn't credit Lisa for her help. Guys, what'd you think? Garbage. Garbage. Absolute the time. Yeah. garbage. I wouldn't call it garbage. It's just there. No, it's definitely garbage. Like the previous episode was one of those ones that was just kind of there. It was not offensive and it was okay. Mm. Hey, I gave that episode a silver. Yeah. yeah. And you were wrong. <laughs> 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 hey, hey, we've already had our discourse on that one. <laughs> yeah. Now it, getting back to this one. BT, for better or worse, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you? She discovers Moe's got a talent for writing by assembling bits that he just stuck on the wall in post-its. Mm. But there was no reason for him to be doing that. He was yeah. just, he, there was no, oh yeah, I just had this random thought and I wanted to write it down. Or if, if he was like, yeah, my therapist says maybe if I write down what makes me angry, it'll stop making me angry. But then I just get angry at the post-it notes. Oh. You know, they're just there. And I no wake real... up with these scrolled on my bed sheets. Anything would have done. Yeah, it's, just, it's not essential. You can literally write it away in a single line as to why they're there to begin with. It's just like, why is he writing about how his mum brought some guy to his play and mm. then called him Steve? Also, if I cut up a dictionary and use those words to write a story, I don't credit the dictionary as being the brilliant writer. What is writing but arranging words you can find in a dictionary? I think the thing is, it, yeah. it's a bit more <laughs> complex than that because some of them were six to ten words long. Still mm. makes her the writer. No, it does. No, hang on. She submitted it under his name. Mm -hmm. She could have submitted it as a joint name. If yep. she wanted credit, she should have taken writing credit at the beginning. Why would she expect it halfway through? Well, it sort of seemed like her goal from the outset to pump Mo up a bit because out of all the Springfielders, he was the one she found most interesting. Yeah, but to be fair, we could all list famous writers we can't list famous editors like that's basically what she's doing so oh, uh, what about whichever one mel regal or will shorts was from the crossword so you, you've literally seen one and you don't know and that's a crossword editor. i know it's one of the two <laughs> <laughs> yeah look i think that's a really good point page about like the lack of legwork there because this is actually an episode that i don't really have a problem with the flow of the story i mm. felt yeah like it's just it's the details yeah yeah like, that bug me how about you, Danny? What is a moment from this episode that stands out to you, for better or worse? The Hitler thing. What the hell yeah. was with the Hitler thing? And mm. why, in terms of the plot? Because, yes, there was a plot, beginning, middle, end. I found the plot was actually the weakest. It was like a really generic Mad Libs plot that they just crammed together. But why was any of the special ed arc there? Because it didn't link into anything. Senior, not special ed. 
<laughs> senior Olympics. Not to be confused with the Spanish Senior Olympics. <laughs> I was really worried <laughs> when nice. it's like the 1936 Olympics, and I'm like, please don't do a Jesse Owens bit. Please oh, don't do man. a Jesse Owens yeah. bit. Please yeah. don't do a Jesse Owens so bit. So much worse. But it wasn't that great in the end anyway. I came this close to hitting Hitler with my javelin, but I hit an assassin that was going to kill Hitler. Then me and Hitler were laughing about it. Yeah, me and Hitler met up for dinner and then laughed about it later. It's like, ha ha ha, Hitler was awful. Ah. It's the turnaround on what you expect, the unexpected consequences. Yeah, I, I found that cutaway joke to be mostly useless as well. Yeah. Jordan, what's the moment from this episode that sounds out to you, for better or worse? All right, I got a joke one and then a real one. First one was... Get one. ...was that Marge, when she, they're driving home, just as an aside, just says, I wonder if the dog thought about us while we were away. <laughs> and that's something I have thought about yeah. before, and I love it. The real one was that at the end, Mo sees Lisa come into the auditorium and, mm. and is remorseful and starts saying a pretty crappy apology. I mean, it was okay. It's, a, it's an apology for Mo. It wasn't enough for Lisa to be like, oh, no, I'm not angry at him anymore and I, yeah. I forgive him. It just wasn't enough. He didn't do anything to win her back. Well, what she wanted was acknowledgement for her contribution, which he still didn't give her. He didn't no. say, he didn't have the apology and then say, everybody, I got to confess, I actually had help putting my poems together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, that's yeah. all she wanted and then he still didn't get it. That was the thing that really bugged me as well. Even if he, it gets him kicked out, like it did for yeah. whoever the other guy was. Gore Vidal, one yes. of the guest stars of this episode. Oh, that was actually him. Wow, okay. Yeah, that was a fucking long ramble useless yes. introduction of Gore Vidal. Ah, like the works of Gore Vidal. No, take that. I assume. I don't know how to read. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it just, it kind of bugged me that it was a very quick turnaround that I didn't buy it, so. Well, yeah, I think this is going to be a big thing, that the plot arc was there, but like you say, BT, the details weren't. How about mm. you, Claire? What's a moment from this episode that sounds out to you, for better or worse? All in all, I didn't really find any of the jokes in this particularly funny, except for one, which for some reason tickled me, and it's the <laughs> dumbest joke. During the um, Senior Olympics, yeah. Grandpa's failing at running on the hurdles, and he's panting and he's sweating and he mm. drops his dentures. Meanwhile, Willie's there cutting the grass with a scythe mm -hmm. for some reason. Notices it's about to rain, so puts on a fully black poncho and then <laughs> sees Grandpa's teeth drop on the ground and it's like chasing him, like, take him back. But because of his thick Scottish accent, all Grandpa sees is this madman screaming in Spectre tongues at death. him, yep. <laughs> yeah, chasing him with the scythe and the hooded <laughs> cloak. And I don't know why, but that image was so funny to me. I also like from that the follow-up joke where they've got the podium for the winners and Grandpa's in first and death's in second. Death's in yeah. second. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I was wondering why, because he was chasing after yeah. him with yeah. the teeth. So, yeah, okay. Exactly. So I really liked that. But everything else was just very unfunny it was really really poorly scripted mm -hmm. like the plot itself as dan said was very generic lisa helps somebody then she doesn't get given credit for it and she's upset and then they feel sad for making a little girl upset and they apologize and everything's great at the end yep. i'm fairly sure this has been done several times before in the simpsons but yeah. the scripting itself was just really garbage and stilted and unnatural and i just don't feel like the timing for the jokes was there the majority of the time yeah this is the only part where i actually laughed yeah, aside from a couple of moments, yeah, I think this was a largely laughless episode. And especially tying into what stood out to me was Homer's involvement in this episode. He fucking dragged it down so yeah. goddamn yeah. much. Yes. The only thing I liked about Homer was him going to pour syrup on Mo at the end. Very slow revenge. <laughs> Is it going to make you feel better if I get hit with syrup? Well, not mm. now. Uh, I'm going to go then. <laughs> yeah. Same as the Austin Powers and Steamroll a bit. Did you, you like know? his don't forget stuff at the start? No, nah, that got frustrating because it's like he's written on so many things he could have just written down what he was not supposed to forget don't forget mo like that's yeah. it that's could have yeah been it. three extra letters like i like the idea of little reminders that you would set for yourself yeah like you tying know. a knot on a piece of string never actually says what you're trying to not to yeah. remember i think it would have been funnier if it was like he had don't forget with his fishing line and hat there don't ah. forget with a little fish and he's like i don't know what any of this means and she's senior olympics and he goes these are really weird notes to leave for myself, yeah. but okay. I like that. I like that. Play count. How many times before today have you seen this episode? Uh, the once. None. Zero. Zero at all. At all. Big fat zero. I actually think I've seen it once before, but I didn't remember until the syrup scene. Yeah? Yeah. It took you all the way to basically the end of the episode. The final That's how forgettable it must be. But I was like, <laughs> yeah. oh yeah, this I remember this. I the remember slow syrup, syrup thing. I think I've seen this like three times or something. Weirdly, the thing that I remember most from this episode is Homer sampling the syrup. 
and like oh, yeah. doing the whole wine yeah. tasting thing. That was the high point of the episode, absolutely. The main thing I remember is the whole 1879 was what I paid for gas one time. And, mm. you know. Burr is what I read on the front of an Eskimo yeah. pie. Yeah, yeah, that's what I remembered of whatever his fate. I don't remember his poems, but I remember where his titles came from. He was just a novelist, wasn't nice he? Nice name, Max Power. Thanks, I got it off a hairdryer. Yep. <laughs> yeah, Gore Vidal. Gore Vidal. Vidal. <laughs> He's very tender. Whittle Gore Vidal. <laughs> Wackiness. Was this a particularly wacky episode? Yes, yes. Nice. very. At the Senior Olympics, you have an uh, old Jewish man doing the uh, Rocky and Bullwinkle dive uh, for yeah. some reason. Yeah, and that was bad. with the legs, the yeah. prosthetic legs. I did kind of like, though, when they're driving home, they see Mo on the porch step. And I was like, oh, no, everyone duck. And everyone duck's like, hey, it's Homer. Oh, no, uh, it's just it's his just car. His yeah. Car. <laughs> oh, and that also, I liked the initial joke of them, like, eating at the table. But then they, they went on too long. Then they did the whole Homer butt wacky fighting over the popcorn bin. Crab yeah. battle. Crab, fight, crab yeah. battle. Crab beef. I really want to go back crab, and watch crab Look battle. like people. <laughs> uh, other wackiness. Nagy just like coughs up the alphabet that says don't forget. Don't forge. forge. Don't forge. But like just in perfect Maggie's lines. a talented baby. Yeah, she's great. Can't believe the pets lined up as well perfectly like that. Yeah. Well, if they have two bowls that they yeah. always eat oh, out yeah. of, I guess. Jasper's beard just catches on fire and then he just... Goes back down mm. the stair thing, just yep. another nonchalant. joke that just took its fucking time. It did. The part I did really hate wackiness was uh, Homer, first of all, starts making fun of Mo for poetry and then falls down the fire escape for about 10 minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah. I and hated that yeah, joke it was so, so much. Annoying. It was a combination of the Springfield Gorge joke and the look at me, I'm the candy man from Lollipop yeah. Lane and all yeah. that. But then. After he finishes falling, he goes, actually, Mo, no, I'm really proud I'm of you. I'm so proud yeah. of you. Yeah. And Mo's like, oh, I love you so much, Homer. mind. Either one of you, make up your mind. Another wacky joke that we all were like, come on, this is so long now, was the, Homer, don't drink and drive. Okay, yeah. I'll, uh, I'll drive between sips. And then it's weird because they get to the convention, they stop. And, and then, then, like, 20 cop cars yeah. right up, including the Rhode Island on the little monster machine. We wow. may be little, but we write big tickets. Fuck that joke. I like the joke of, fine, then, I'll drive between sips. But then to show it got really annoying. Like, it was okay as a line. But... Especially because was, there was about 10 to 12 yeah. of the sips. I do want to throw in some positive whack. Mo lives in, I can't know what the apartment's name was, but it says, Buzziest Neon Signs yeah, in Town. That was yep. good. That was Once good. again, sign writers on point. Disliked the massage chair being full of cockroaches, though. Yeah. That feels overplayed. It was, again, it was a tell and then show, so yeah. it should have just been, yeah, that ain't supposed to do that. That might have something to do with all them roaches. Way better. You yeah. know, don't cut it open and have, see, look at the roaches. As you said, you know, tell and then show, it reminded yeah. me of the little throwaway, like, one-liner Marge gag, which was, sorry that your Mo and Tell didn't get graded well, Lisa. <laughs> yeah, I thought well, that was cute. That was cute, but the follow-up annoyed me, where Lisa's like, oh, I don't care about that. It's like, you love grades. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. And she clearly cared in the classroom. Called uh, them a bunch of what Philistines. Say? Philistines. Yeah. Other wacky stuff was just things happening to Mo at the end of his birthday when Lisa's like holding the umbrella. It's like lightning strikes. Santa's little helper oh, fucking launches swallows, onto his arm. Yeah. Swallows his whole arm. Again, like, the I like the start of this where Mo's like standing out there on the curb trying to get home and then he gets splashed by a car. And he's like, Hah. and then the sprinklers hit him. He's like, yeah. Hah. And then it starts raining. He's like, yeah, but then it just goes too far when Santa's little helper is now lodged on his arm. And then and a bird. bird's nest falls on him and a bird's pecking at him for S- killing the still eggs. Still top three. Still top five. Still top 30. Fuck like, off. How many bites do you need at this shit joke? Yeah. The other wackiness I wanted to bring up was around the pond where yes. Lisa's feeding the ducks bread and then some to the grad oh, students. Yeah. yeah. Which is just an absurd joke that, that I actually kind of liked. It was like she knew that they would flock to it because she does it so nonchalant. It's not like she misses the pond and they kind of mm. dive in to get it's it. She it's, throws mm. it over to the edge, like where she knows they're going to be. It's really bizarre. She's fed grad students before. It kind of went too far with the like Professor Dean or whatever coming along and whipping them or whatever. Oh, and the other thing I wanted to bring up, yeah, when Mo is fighting with the geese who have swallowed parts of his poem, he goes, oh, look at me, I'm in the mud with geese. He was clearly in a pond. It could be a mud. muddy pond, yeah. I guess. It um, was a very blue pond. That's true. Well, if I'm going to fight with geese, I might as well win. Yeah, I pulls didn't like that. Gun. I, like, I could have done without the gun, but like brass knuckles or something. Just pulls them out and then <laughs> yeah, cut away. Yeah, that would have been better. So how about the heart of this episode? Did you guys feel the bumps? Weirdly, a couple of times I did. Um, what? What? Show you're working. <laughs> the first one was when Lisa's on the porch and Homer and Bart come up mm-hmm. and she says, Mo marginalized my contribution. And they're both like, 
<gasps> what? Yeah. yeah. No one makes my daughter run away sobbing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And it was kind of cute for them to like really stick up for her. You know, it was nice. At it least. didn't feel like they were being sarcastic. No, exactly. Ooh, look at Lisa <laughs> pulling her eyes out and lollipop gumdrops. Mm. Well, yeah, especially because I was like, when they were going to go sightseeing, and it's like, you want to come with us, Lisa? And she's like, oh, I'll just be. You I know. would be good company. Like, oh, sweetie. Thanks for, Thanks for the warning. Yeah. <laughs> and they just yeah. left. And it's like, yeah. was your eight year old doll that It was jerk ass, but it was funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay. The other one was, it just made me feel sad. Mo's depressing birthday song to himself. Oh, yeah. Mm. Which was like was basically much. saying he wants to die. Yeah, I could have done without the line, won't someone kill me? Should have been, won't someone yeah. hug me or something like that. Like, it was a little yeah. too much to be like, if you can get a favor from someone, why would it be murder? Like, Those are lyrics everyone could enjoy. <laughs> my dad would always do this when you'd ask him, hey, dad, can I have a favor? And he goes, I haven't got a gun. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. It was just like one of his dad lines, especially go, Dad, what's the time? He goes, oh, it's a way of dividing a day up into 24 equal parts. Hot. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Classic norm. Yeah. Wow, you need to turn that around one day. Like, Dad, can I have a favor? Oh, I'd have a gun. Here you go. <laughs> <laughs> Only in America. Just hold it to your head. <laughs> Do, <laughs> it. Do it. Do it, motherfucker. <laughs> Oh, darkness. Yeah, we were sort of saying before as well, the ending with Mo and Lisa really didn't satisfy that whole heart arc either, which I felt like they were kind of getting there with building it up. Yeah, a few changes that it would have meant a lot more, even if it is formulaic. I think one of my big problems is, like, Mo is pretty much spelling out everything he did wrong to Lisa. Mm-hmm. Oh, after I betrayed you, and now you're going to make me another poem, and I'm going to take all the credit and write it yeah, up. Yeah, like he was fully aware of what he yeah. was doing. Yeah, and then was still surprised, and I was like, "Oh, yeah, my actions." Like that's what I mean. Where the joke didn't land because yeah. it was self-referential, but also somehow missing the point. I mean, Simpsons teen era was making all this like, haha, meta, this is all the cliches that we do. Yeah. And it doesn't actually make for entertaining TV. Like, no, unless you point them out if you then do something different with them. Mm. But to just point them out and then follow them poorly is a bad idea. So ultimately, though, guys, did it feel like an episode of The Simpsons? I mean, Lisa not being appreciated is something we've trod several times before. Mo kind of ingratiating himself into someone else's family. Mm-hmm. Think of that one where he forms a bond with Maggie. But I love that episode, though. Yeah, that Very one cute. is good, though. Very cute episode. I wouldn't say there's a huge betrayal of character. In no, it. it's just the story itself is trod before and better. Yeah, and the meta commentary doesn't help, which is making the show as a whole feel off. I don't like how selfish Lisa is. Oh. Ooh, hot take. Let's go. Explain. But no, I actually kind of see where you're coming from because when they're all there and Mo's like, oh, I had help on the title. He's about to explain it. And then we have that other guy, Gore Vidal or whatever, just get lambasted by everyone else and even kicked out of the thing for yeah. explaining that he just got his titles from random places. Oh, yeah. Look, and yeah. she sees that. She sees that happen. She is smart enough to be like, well, he's under a lot of pressure. He's about to get torn apart by the mob. Mm. I think you should be able to understand that. More than that, she like sees him crying and talking about suicide on their front step and she's like, ooh, I can use him to do my assignment, get good mm. marks on my assignment. And then she's like, how come no one's giving me credit on my work and his, I'm here to help him raise him up from my... It's all about me. It's all about me. Why aren't I getting recognized? I wanted you to feel better about yourself. Now, why don't I have credit for that? Yeah. Interesting. I actually found her very irritating in this episode as well. A bitch. Jesus. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. I think it was that she had to write a story on a fascinating thing and she thought here's a tormented soul let's God. use him yeah i don't know i just don't want to believe lisa is a jerk i don't think she's a jerk in this episode however i just found it to be really dramatic compared to what was actually done like mm-hmm. basically he was only looking to give her credit on the title that's the only thing she really didn't get credit for or she expected credit for. Mm. And she really just whinged about it. And I know she's eight years old. I have to like <laughs> think about her as a child character. I've got to say that Howling at a Concrete Moon is a shit title anyway. <laughs> yeah, it's it like a fucking, you know those shirts with the wolf and the moon and the... <laughs> Free wolf moon. Yeah, yeah it's garbage. You know, always, garbage we title. do run into that problem where, yes, Lisa's eight, but it's also a character we've known for 30 exactly. years. Exactly. And also she's usually the most mature of yeah. the yeah. whole show. But I really didn't feel like he did something so terrible that should have spiraled her into depression for the rest of the... Yeah. They tried to double down at the scene in the lake, except it was so poorly scripted and so meta, but in a really crappy way that it wasn't funny. It didn't actually feel serious and it just all seemed really stupid. Like, 
have a setup scene where like, Mo, we're so privileged to have you here. We're going to have you the keynote speaker at tonight's dinner. We'll have a fabulous new poem for us. I'm sure you can dig something up from your repertoire. Yes. And then he's like, haha, yeah, of course. He should have gone up desperate to Lisa as well. Lisa, help me. you got to help me maintain my charade. I'm in the middle of a hijinks shenanigans and I'm going to get caught. Help. And she has to be like, ooh, wrestling with my conscience, Mo. Yeah. She'll be all like, you know, one day you'll look up and shout, save me, and I'll whisper no. And I'll whisper Mo. <laughs> <laughs> or it should have just been like higher stakes in the beginning, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she sent both his and her names in, but he took her name off. He's like, mm-hmm. no, 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 this is my work. Something to make it a bit more of an actual betrayal with no negative consequences to Mo. Mm. Like he's just a bit of a glory hog now. That mm. would have made it more dramatic, a more serious issue for her to be upset about. And I would have believed the story a bit more. Yeah, because one thing I really liked in this episode was Lisa turning around to Mo and going, you know what, you are a jerk. And I think there was something more to get out of that as well, where Mo is like constantly playing the victim card throughout this episode, but given the first chance of success or whatever, yeah, he turns into an arsehole and the creep that everyone makes him out to be. And yeah, I don't feel like they dug deep enough into that either. So yes or no, would you watch this one again? Probably not, but if it was on, I wouldn't run screaming from the room. (laughs) <laughs> which we do with like Lisa goes Gaga. Ah, the Gaga episode. <laughs> I might. Ooh. Like it would pass the hangover test definitely. You guys? I would run screaming from the room. I just run around the room screaming. Yes. It's good cardio. <laughs> <laughs> scream a size. Yeah. Extra scream. <laughs> like scream a size. There is laugh a size. Have you seen that video? No. Oh, is okay. it funny? <laughs> It's <laughs> awkward. Yeah. <laughs> or have you ever seen those one which is like primal release, I think it's called? That's just Sexy. called masturbation. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was going to say. With screaming. <laughs> <laughs> so masturbation. Like that guy who exits that reality show with the... Oh, 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 oh. Like, have you seen that one? No. The guy who punches fish? No, that's that's Bear from Alaskan Bush People. No, this is the guy who's he starts quoting Rocky. It's about how hard you can get hit and keep moving. And then he starts like hyperventilating while like looking like Donkey Kong. You mean naked except for a tie? <laughs> he, he does have a shirt on, so yeah. I'll show it to you after this. I think we've sort of grazed over it, but what would you change? BT, we'll start with you. At first I was like, let's have a thing where maybe... Lisa's name gets taken off of it because no one will take her seriously as a writer because she's eight or whatever. But then we get kind of a grandpa itchy and scratchy thing. So you know what? Let's flip it entirely. Let's have it. Lisa's getting praised as this eight-year-old genius who, you know, has just assembled Mo's thing. Mo gets left out because he's a depressing dirtbag, but without his pain and suffering and ability to write about that suffering, Lisa has nothing to draw from. Let's just flip the entire script on this one. Wow. Danny. Much better. Much much happier with that. I'm still... Quite cr- cranky, gr- grumpy. I'm quite grumpy because probably like I was saying before, if I chop up a magazine and use those pieces to make an art piece, a collage. Yeah, then you're writing a ransom note. That's my collage. You don't have to credit the magazine as the creator. So Mo is not the artist of that poetry. I still disagree with that because she's not taking single words and rewriting things. She's taking fragments of text, whole fragments, fragments of, text. of text. Yeah, exactly. She's creating a new cohesive narrative out of she's it. She's putting it together in a way that is actually has meaning as opposed to just if you just threw it on the floor, it wouldn't be the same thing. Why don't we just assume they're both failures? Yeah, it's pretty garbage, but he put together the metaphors and she just put the metaphors in order. Mm. Yeah. If nothing else, if she wanted credit, she should have put... Her name, as well as Moe's, before she submitted it to the fucking stupid poetry journal. Oh, I liked Homer's poem. Did everyone like Homer's poem? No. Oh, no. uh, the rapping tomato? Yeah. Wasn't that great? Are you serious? That was going to be my one and only Jordan Zane O'Connor. Is that, he no, just, yeah. is that he just had it there. He just like, we're not talking about them ever since they rejected my poem. And he just like pulls, pulls it out, out of his pocket. pocket. Like, yeah, come Rapped on. all day from April to May. And also it was me. <laughs> great punchline. <laughs> That's like one of those old jokes that you would tell like, Hey, why did the plane crash? Because the pilot oh, was, was a tomato. A tomato. Yeah. Ba-da, ba-da, ba-da. It's like just random humor. It's stupid. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would you change? The big crux of the problem is being scared that the writers will find out he's actually a commoner when the whole poems are about his common scum feelings and how earthy and rustic he is, Yeah, you know? And they're all, so where did you think of this title? And he's like, I thought of it all on my own. And they're all like, oh, we're so proud of you. Mm. That was shit. Yeah, that's that not an explanation shit. of where the title came from. Yeah, how did you come up with this? All on my own. It's like how a two-year-old tells you how they took a poop. After he, <laughs> after he led into 
it with, oh, I had some help. Yeah. And then it was like, I had some help from my brain because I'm a genius. Shut up. Oh, we're so proud of you. So proud. <laughs> what, what? It's like they forgot what they asked. And then yeah. they run out to a hay... A, a, a hayride. A hayride. What the fuck was going on? To the tune of Let Get It Started oh, by the... What the fuck was going on? Uh, by the way, sorry, guys. I fucking hate the Black Eyed Peas. God damn it. Well, anyway. they've not got nice things to say about you, so at least it's fair. <laughs> Where is the love, Elliot? Where is the love? <laughs> not in this room. So my big problem is... Like, the whole point is that his poetry was from the point of view of a yep. rusted gutter rat. I think they should have been embracing that. Uh, yes, a yeah. rusted gutter rat. <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, a title. <laughs> yeah, that's a band name. I would have felt more empathetic if the story had been like, now that he's successful, he hasn't got any gutter feelings anymore. You mm-hmm. know the story. Uh, right? yeah. You know the one. If you want to stick with this current plot, have him, yeah, he can't have the gutter terrible feelings anymore, but now Lisa's depressed, so she can write one. And then he's got the big, I didn't write this one, Lisa did. And she helped me with the first one as well. I'm not a writer. And they're all like, oh, well, we don't want you here. And he's like, well, I don't want to be here. Eh, Fuck you, all you fancy motherfuckers. You guys don't know what it's like to live in a gutter, writing poetry on the scraps of pizza boxes. Jordan, what would you like to change about this episode? At the top, I said my major problem was that there was no reason for Lisa to forgive Mo. So I would like to change it by Mo essentially coming clean and saying, look, you're the real star, like to Lisa, but then throwing him out, but him being happy. He can be all, I'd rather be in a gutter with a true friend than with those pompous jackasses. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. And like him being discredited and his publisher or the Jamison character, Jameson character going, oh, well, you know, you'll never work again. Still get this. Give me poems of (laughs) Spider-Man. Man, (laughs) he was just batshit insane in this episode, wasn't he? It was a bit of fun. Like Adam West in Family Guy. Yeah, so one of the other guest stars of the episode, J.K. Simmons, returning again. And like the other week, Beach, we did an episode where he was doing this shtick, but it wasn't the J. Jonah Jameson character. It was just like Mm. this schlubby character guy. And it was also in season 18. Mm. I love J.K. Simmons. He is a really great actor at Mm. fucking everything. And yeah, I like his stuff here where he's all like, Get me this. Oh, well, what do you mean you don't work for me? Well, you're hired. Well, now you're fired. Well, now we don't work for me anymore. We can be friends. Why didn't you ever call anymore? Well, some friend you are. Goodbye. Click. Yeah. But I didn't like the on the phone with Maya Angelou bit, the whole fucking cartoony nonsense. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, otherwise, J.K. Simmons did well. Yeah. And Claire? I liked Beej's idea to flip the script entirely. Yeah, I win. But if we do keep with the basic premise, I just want it to be a leaning into the heart rather than the wackiness. Mm. Because there was too much wackiness, mm. too many crappy jokes. Script writing just wasn't committed to the actual plot. I want them to actually give a shit about the story that they're trying to tell. I want Mo and Lisa to have a true friendship or a bond or some sort of proper solid collaboration. I want Mo's betrayal to be something very serious and deliberate following into Jordan's. I want the actual apology to be very meaningful. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just needs to actually be a heartfelt episode rather than a gag episode. I agree. And tying into having more of the heart is what I'd change about it. And if you're going to have Homer be a fucking jackass this whole episode... Mm. I would have really liked it to be more of a point at the end and where Leek is like, wait, you are rushing to my defense? Like, yeah, I don't get your whole poetry flancy nonsense, but, you mm-hmm. know, you're my daughter and I'm here for you and my daughter is more important than my bartender. Is it? No, my daughter is more important. <laughs> yeah. <than> my- yeah. <laughs> that could actually work really well because after that really terrible gag where Homer falls out the window and mm. is teasing yeah. Mo for liking something feminine, uh, there's a little moment between like Lisa and Mo where they're like, wow, you actually have something here. This is really amazing. Like, mm. oh, thanks for helping me. And maybe it's the fact that Homer's being really disinterested in her poetry and her writing. You know, she actually finds more understanding from Mo than she's getting from Homer. Yeah. And then that would tie in with Homer being a bit of a jerk, but also give them a little bit of redemption at the end. All this talk about flipping the script kind of mm. got me thinking, what if instead of Lisa supporting Mo's journey into the arts, Lisa thinks Mo has no talent at poetry and is garbage, but like Barney and Homer are like, wow, you're a genius, brilliant poet. You really understand the feelings of the working class. Your words made me feel things. Yeah. And like all the working class schmucks are like, this guy is a genius emotive poet. And Lisa's like, I, I don't know if you are. And all the upper class slobs like, oh, this is nothing at all. Like, and he says rat bar. That's yeah. terrible imagery. He's like the working man's poet. Yeah. Well, yeah. And there's like this populism Trump metaphor going on. And then he, he gets to the top of the world and he's got his big podium address in front of everyone. And he's like, oh, rat barf corn and he's reading it out and he's like you know what maybe i am cr- may- sorry guys now that i've said this out loud maybe this is garbage we can have yeah a- it's like why the black hide peas don't play anymore there was that famous concert where they were like let's get it stuck 
wait, this is garbage. <laughs> Sorry, folks, full <laughs> refunds. Yeah. <laughs> so the guest stars of this episode, yeah, we already mentioned J.K. Simmons, Gore of Adol. Thomas Pychon's character model was in the background. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah. The, Pynchon. The, 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 Pynchon? No, I'm pretty sure it's Python. Were you guys. <laughs> so the other guest stars as well were Tom Wolfe, the yeah, writer yeah. who uses the most exclamation points out of anyone in the world. <laughs> it's true! <laughs> yeah. That was a good joke. But yeah, what'd you guys think of Tom Wolfe? He had a pretty big role in this episode. He was what he needed to be. Like, yeah. they didn't give him a lot to do, but, you know, he was eloquent. He had good personality there. He had presence. But I feel like he could have been replaced with literally any literary celebrity. Mm-hmm. You know? There was no Tom Wolfiness to his role. Yeah, yeah, it's not a distinct voice or anything. It's just, he can't read good, you know? Yeah. yeah. And the other two guest stars was Michael Chabon and Jonathan Franzen. Yeah, mm. they ripped into each other pretty hard, didn't they? Yeah. yeah. I did like yeah. that back and forth. And you fight like Anne Rice. I, <laughs> yeah. I really like that joke where it was, um, wow, you couldn't make this stuff up. <laughs> you couldn't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Your quote looks good on my dust jacket. <laughs> I could have done without the shouty guy in the yeah. crowd, though. Like, Woo! Yeah, the guy who's usually shouting out Freebird at an author's mm-hmm. convention, but yep. yeah, whatever. BT, any other notes? Just the one. Well, at least we found out candles are made by losers. <laughs> Take that, <laughs> candle makers. Yeah. Claire, any other notes? When they were reading like the guide for Vermont, it's like, wow, couples in this state sure like to clink glasses. <laughs> and I can just picture the brochure without yeah. seeing it. Yeah. Perfect. Smiles and clinking mm, glasses. Bunch of waspy people. Yeah. 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 I also like, we'll open the floor up to fawning praise and obvious questions. That was good. <laughs> and then the first guy that stands up is like, I'd like to thank you all for being such great writers. Yeah. Like, thank you so much for your art. Oh. Beautiful. I also liked, even though it's a bit harsh, Millhouse calling and like Lisa being like, I'm not here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Moe's as well to speak to her. <laughs> I hey, know, right? Danny, any other notes? I really like the animation when he slid down the chair. In a garbage episode, I tend to look for the little moments, the camera angles or the little bit of animation here and there. Like that really nice waterfall scene. The waterfall scene. Yeah. Really I was going to say that as gag. well. Yeah, that was an awful gag. Beautiful shot of a waterfall. Oh, uh, we'll now open the floor up to sycophantic questions. And the first one is like, you guys are the best. Can everyone just get... Oh, no, wait. Claire just said the fuck. Mm. Mwah. Jordan, do you have any other notes? Three sign gags that I liked. One was Thursday, writers on writing. Friday, janitors on janiting. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) The other one was when the word loaf had the thing and it said like underneath, Philip Roth may be moody. Who's Philip Roth? He's an American writer who's like... Moody. Yeah, his works are really autobiographical and they're kind of depressing. The word loaf as well is apparently there's a writer's convention in the US called the bread loaf. Yeah, which I think Robert Frost started... Oh, your mate? Yeah, my mate. Two Perth diverged, yep, on a snowy wood or whatever. That's the one. <laughs> that's that's my dad. Um, <laughs> I didn't catch a lot of Moe's things, but there was one that I saw that said, liver fights kidney, who wins? Yeah. <laughs> liver. Yeah. yeah, it can regenerate. Yeah. And then that maple syrup ending, I fucking hated. I liked it, but it went on too long. It's mm. just like, hey, Dan, just go into the booth. And just make weird, stupid sounds. Make some gargly, cool. swishy right, sampling sounds. Go for sounds. it. Yeah, it went Thanks. too long. I only like it just from the angle that, yeah, wine tasting is such a fucking ridiculous wank. Oh, yeah. And the absurd faces that sommeliers make. And because, like, wine is a proper liquid and maple syrup's so thick, like, the idea of him swishing around his mouth. Mm. See, this is why it's funny, Jordan. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry. I, <laughs> Let me explain comedy to you. It's time for my final notes. Bit of a jerk ass homer line of, is it our anniversary? No, we don't have one this year. Mm. Yeah. Unless they were married on a leap year. Anyway, mm. Lenny collects absolute advertisements. What other Dumb. ones do you have? Mm. There's others. <laughs> That's exactly what he said. Fuck that fucking fuck joke. I did like Homer and Moe's little car bar there. Yeah, I do like he slides it across the table, wipes yeah. down the counter. Yeah, it was very yeah. smooth animation. That was the other part I wanted to mention just for the, yeah. the smoothness of the animation. Very yeah. slick. But I didn't like the follow-up of the, oh, I've got to go to Vermont for some stupid yeah. writing fest. Yeah. Um, BT, and in a previous podcast, you pointed out how they were eating mashed potatoes that yeah. had like a little volcano with gravy yeah. in it. They had that again this episode. Gravy right. They put it in weak episodes, obviously, to, to make us hungry. <laughs> <laughs> it's time to rank this thing! Gravy. And we are starting with Claire this time. I'm going to give it a participant. It's not as bad as like a failure, but it's definitely not good enough to be a bronze because I just really could not get into the actual 
script of it at all and the majority of the jokes were really poorly written in my opinion so it's trying it's got a plot there that could be tweaked into something quite usable without too many significant changes but it just didn't do enough bt i am going to participant unlike last one so i gave a high participant and this is a low participant but it's still a participant it's meh it's there it exists i feel nothing and i feel neither highs nor lows it's meh yeah, I agree with you. This is so participanty, and it's such a disappointment because it had potential. I like the arc. It's just none of the material around the arc was good. Jordan, I'm going to average out to a participant as well. It was kind of there were bits that I liked. The story annoyed me, and it, we've done it before and better. And I wish it had been better. Danny, I'm going to give it a failure. Really? Ooh. Yeah. I didn't enjoy it. I feel like we spent like three hours talking about how much we hate the shit in this episode. We spend a bit of time talking about fixing it and looking for good points in it. So by the end of the thing, we focus on positives. But this was a garbage fire, man. The very first thing that Claire said was, this is garbage. The very first thing that I said was, this is garbage. But it wasn't on fire. It was just garbage. There's a difference. If it was on fire, it'd be gone by now and the world would be a better place for it. Failure. All right. Well, averaging out, this will be a dull participant. It'll be joining other dull participants participants like season 11's it's a mad 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 marge mm. the shut up becky episode i really hated that one you did break my wife please where homer gets into walking and then marge runs him over oh yeah <laughs> don't fear the roofer mm. fuck that one husbands and knives that's when marge opens her curves gym and homer oh! plastic surgery and shit ah garbage garbage I was like, I remember Marge's story being okay. What was wrong with, oh, fuck. <laughs> yep. And Puffless, when Selma and Patty quit smoking. Oh, yeah. Mm. And Maggie's weird little side story at Disney nah, fucking yeah, save the... Yeah. Oh, and also The Great Fatsby Part 1, <laughs> which we reviewed oh, last time we did a yes. big vacation oh, podcast yeah. episode. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> Unlike Part 2, which got a unanimous failure. Because really? at least part one led us to some, you know, hope that we get better. Yeah. It did not. All right. It is time that we move on to the classic era. And did you guys know it's been over a year now since The Simpsons Index has done a season one episode? Yes. Whoa. Yeah. I kind of burned through them a bit too quickly, forgetting that it's only half as long as the <laughs> other seasons. So thought I'd give uh, season one a bit of a break. But now we're going to go to see Moaning Lisa. We will be back. <laughs> And we are back, and we just watched our classic and final episode for the evening, which was Season 1, Episode 6, <sighs> Moaning Lisa. First released in February of 1990. Jesus. <laughs> Before any of us were born. <laughs> <laughs> that is incorrect. <laughs> Quite. We're so old. Directed by Wesley Archer, written by Al Jean and Mike Reese, in this episode, episode. Lisa's feeling really sad and she wanders out at night and meets Bleeding Gums Murphy and plays some jazz with him and and in the B story Homer and Bart are competing at video boxing and Homer's feeling very insecure because mm. he can mm. never win. There's like an Oedipus thing going on there. A little bit. Yeah. What did we think y'all? I really like it but but yeah there's a reason that when you're explaining the plot you said lisa's feeling sad and then meets pretty gums murphy and that's about 10 minutes into the episode that she meets him yeah because there's not a lot, lot going on for a while but then it gets to such amazing heights it's kind of flat for a while but then it just skyrockets upwards and ah, it's gonna be a mix man i feel it has to be judged slightly differently because the structure of the whole show even though it still had a story b story was still very different yeah this is what they're figuring out what they are yeah. Lisa, there's no room for creativity in my country tis for thee. Oh, mm -hmm. fucking Lago in this, man. Oh, he's such a douche. Like, it's very little likable mm. about him. I really love this kind of Simpsons because it's basically the Simpsons, like a cartoon replacing the standard family sitcom. Yeah. Yes. They play a little bit with what you can do in a cartoon that you can't do IRL. But mm. they're actually really sticking to the family sitcom they're tropes. Yeah, they're very they're grounded. Earthy. And yeah, I think they even do this little bit is uh, when Homer's like, well, why don't you come sit on daddy's knee and I'll tell him all about it. And then that's the kind of Brady Bunch thing that he would have fixed everything. And he's just like completely out of his depth. This is just like, Look, Lisa, horsey ride. Yay. <laughs> yeah. I guess it is like it would be such a refreshing palate cleanser for the sitcoms of the 80s where the dad knows everything. That's yeah. it. The whole thing is about undercutting wholesome tropes mm. of yeah. the previous genre. Jordan, for better or worse, what is a moment from this episode that stands out to you? 
It's going to be for the better. And I'm sorry if one of you other four were going to say it because it's so powerful. The speech that Marge Fuck, gives. That was my part. Yeah, that's why I apologized up front. But <laughs> that speech that Marge gives about you, if you want to be sad, you can be sad and I'll, I'll keep smiling for the book. And it's like, that's like the closest I've come to like almost crying in a Simpsons episode. Oh, I was yeah. waiting. <laughs> like after that yeah. scene played out, I just went, oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, your beard looked a little damp. <laughs> <laughs> it's strange because uh, like in the rest of the episode, Marge kind of seems like she doesn't quite know what to do. And, no, and she it, well, she's wrestling with well, the way she was raised. Yeah, exactly. Because she's thinking about, well, this works for me. It's like not until she sees Lisa kind of kind of getting bullied and, and yeah. beaten down by the man, <laughs> Largo, and, that oh. she kind of goes, that's all crap and I'm going to help my daughter like for yeah. real and give her the some piece real of advice, that advice. She just like thoughtlessly reiterates from her mom is yeah. so obviously unhealthy. Mm. Just bottle up your emotions, put them right down deep and then just pretend Push to smile. Push them down to your nearly walking on them. And then you'll be popular with uh, boys will like you. And you'll, you'll get invited to parties. Then maybe one day you'll be happy. And like she walks yeah. off and it's only seconds later that Marge is like, you can hear her replaying it in her head being like, what the fuck did I just say to that poor mm. child? Well, it was also like the flashback is so sad as yeah. well when you flash back to Marge's mum because obviously Margie. Marge's mum loved her you know mm. but the whole like oh you better put a smile on before you go out that door because people will judge how good your mum is based on yeah. how happy you are Yeah, and like that would have just gotten right into Marge's head the idea like well my child has to be happy otherwise I'm doing something wrong Yeah, you know so obviously if my child is smiling then I'm doing everything right and flipping that on her head and like realising just what to say is basically you don't have to fix it yeah the main thing is just support her as well as you can i think that's the thing that i guess makes lisa smile in the end is that she maybe felt like no one in her family understood her and for marge to kind of just be like you know what you are and i understand what you're going through and it's okay because everyone else was trying to cheer her up i guess if someone's in a funk like that it's really hard to make someone happy and so you just got to kind of let them know that it's okay. Yeah, that's, I think, the best takeaway from this and something we could really use a lot more of now is the acceptance of her negative feelings, yeah. not to push them away or just cheer them up. No, it's okay to have them and it's good and, you know, we'll help you work through them and we'll be here when they're done. And it's just beautiful. I think going back to Jordan's point where he's like, oh, no, it's actually somebody understands her. Mm. I think it was more that Marge was like, you know what? I don't get it. I don't know why you're sad. I can't stop you from feeling sad, but that's okay. You're allowed to feel what you're feeling but we're still going to be here for you. The line that will ride it out there with you mm. is just fucking so beautiful to me. Yeah. Yep. And like I got the implication from like her dream sequence that maybe Marge hasn't exactly dealt with depression or at least in the same way that Lisa currently is. Maybe that advice just smile worked for her because mm. she didn't have to deal with like Make it till you make it. And then seeing how wrong that was in practice and then just saying I'll be there with you is just mm -hmm. oh man, I'm going to start crying again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one of the hardest things dealing with someone else with depression is definitely switching off the part of you that automatically tries to fix problems and solve yeah. things and just be able to listen to someone's problems, help them vent and mm -hmm. be there to support them without trying to step in and cure the world, magic it all better, you know? And that's really an important lesson for Marge. But for all you listeners out there, yeah. sometimes active listening is more important than being helpful. It's more helpful than being helpful. I think it's a really powerful lesson for them to be teaching the audience. Like, don't sit there trying to fix someone when they're sad because usually that's going to push someone away and make them go be like, oh, you don't know what I'm feeling. You aren't going through what I'm going through. And yeah. there's, no one knows what anyone else is feeling 100%. All you can do is support them rather than say, I get this. I've been... Because if... From the inside, that's going to feel condescending or patronizing or like, yeah, man, I understand. I know what you're going through. Just be like, yo, damn, that really sucks. Bro, mm. it's, it's the whole, I don't know what you're going through and I can't help truly, but I can... But I like you. But I'm standing here next Still to you. Still like you anyway. <laughs> yeah. I think like what struck me about this and probably the reason that we're all like getting teary now, though I doubt we did when we were children, is because it's something that you don't really understand the full weight of it until you're older. Because mm -hmm. luckily most children don't have to go through that kind of aimless sadness of depression. Mental health crisis. Yeah. But it's something that as you get older, you really can sympathize with both Lisa and with Marge, yeah. who doesn't know how to fix it. I or think everyone even, at some point Homer. is going to be on both sides of that depression mm. conversation, whether they notice it or not. You know, it's well, something that it's, everyone It's a very goes progressive through. episode, like yeah. in yeah. the sense that it's very relevant for, for today. Yeah. And like amazing to think that this was 
a season one. And not only that, it's the sixth. It's the halfway point yeah. for them yeah. in season one. Just amazing depth. There was a someone who had basically sat down and watched all the Simpsons, had never seen it before, and watched all of it beginning to end, and came to the conclusion that this series hated Lisa. And I watched a YouTube rebuttal by Bob Chipman, aka Movie Bob. He doesn't think that's true because he thinks most of the writers on The Simpsons were Lisa. Mm-hmm. They were these, you know, intellectual types surrounded by people who didn't get that. And so I imagine their process of Lisa's depression is largely through their own experiences and yeah, kind of just wishing. Yeah. You know, people who are good natured but don't know what to do, like Homer, or people who try to cheer you up. But again, it's not about being cheered up, like Bart. And just finally, she gets to Marge, who is someone who's just like, you know what? I'm just here for you no matter what's going on. Hmm. It's pretty progressive as well, this episode, Hmm. considering it's that juxtaposition of the old world values of like the 50s and 60s, especially with the role of women in a household, which Marge would have grown up in, which is like, you don't vent your feelings because you know mm-hmm. man will love you if you get angry yeah. and, and yeah. sad all the time on, we still have people who are like i mean have you tried not being depressed how about you walk <laughs> it off pussy <laughs> yeah just try not to think about it i'm cured <laughs> um and marge for the most part is still that kind of mm. like homemaker role like she does still have that traditional role but mm. this shows that you know she can have a much more modernist viewpoint which definitely wouldn't have been of the time you've got this moment of yeah the character growing but in a way that they can still sort of reset back to zero in a way marge i mean later episodes goes bald from stress you know Mm -hmm. because she is the type to bottle things down and that's what she's been taught and that's the kind of person she is now as an adult but the idea that she understands that that's not what she wants for her daughter Mm. you know and that in itself is so powerful because she's like well yeah this is for me I can't quite change yet. Maybe I don't know how to change. I don't know how to relax. I don't know how to vent my feelings effectively. But she doesn't want to teach her daughter Mm. to bottle down her emotions the way that she has. Yeah. That's one of the big symptoms of people that have grown up in abusive environments or unhealthy environments is that they don't want that for their kids, you know? Mm. You know what? This is getting dark. We're going to a dark (laughs) place, guys. Yeah. Well, I mean, this episode inspires it. Mm. I just realized. It's still only been yeah. Jordan. <laughs> Better or worse, what did you think? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we've uh, pretty much breezed through the heart and stuff. Uh, so uh, let's rank this thing, I guess. But yeah, I think we got more to say on this. But yeah, uh, we'll uh, cross over to BT. I'm going to go in like a pentagram shape this time. I like it. BT, what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse? Bleeding Gums Murphy. <laughs> Oh, He's yeah. just freaking amazing. And mm. I'll just interject mm. and say the guest star of this episode, Ron Taylor. He was an American singing performer, actor. He played Audrey 2. Oh, right. Cool. In Little Shop of Horrors. I don't know if it was in the movie. It wasn't. But it was definitely on the Broadway show. Okay. And he played Audrey over 2,000 times. He oh, did Little Shop wow. of Horror over 2,000 times, over five years. 2,000 in five years? Apparently. Math, does that check out? Is that like more yeah, than one a day? Yeah, like a matinee and yeah. the evening oh, performance yeah, as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, also had performances in Twin Peaks, Deep Space Nine, and Ali McBeal. And yeah, unfortunately passed away at the age of 49 mm, in rough. 2002 of a heart attack. Oh, yeah. it wasn't oh, due wow. to his gum disease then no 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 i see uh, he wasn't method for ah, this it was um, no no you see he was an actor and that was a fictional character <laughs> he also wasn't a you're plant. explaining it to yourself which is interesting <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean because honestly it's kind of a flat episode until he shows up because i immediately just wrote did bleeding gums just make this a silver at least but i mean his introduction is amazing lisa's just feeling no one understands me homer's yelled at her for playing the sax and he's tried to say oh no it's okay you can play sweetie she's like no no i'll just work on my fingering unless the clacking of keys is too loud Um, you just clack as loud as you want honey oh yeah and again it's another moment where homer is trying but he just doesn't know what he's supposed to do for real but then meets bleeding gum he's like that's a great song what's it called i never had an italian suit (laughs) 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 sorry i never had italian suit blues Blues. yeah Yeah. Uh, you play pretty good for a girl with no problems. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she explains everything going on. He's like, wow. Because he's gone through, my wife left me and I'm out of money and I'm broke and yeah. living on the so streets. And all I've got yeah. is, and I'm so lonely. She's like, my mom gave away my cupcake. <laughs> But I like it because it's still a problem and it's still, it. you know, you, your depression does not necessarily come from tangible instance. And the way that Bleeding Gums reacts to her as well, <laughs> this like little white girl that's coming yeah. up to yeah. be like, I've got problems too. He's like, well, I can't help you, but I can jam with you. I, I can't help you. I'm just a terrific horn player with tons of soul. 
<laughs> oh, isn't that that's hard, man? Oh, yeah, I can't beautiful. help. But you. like, I mean, while his line of like "you ain't got no real problems" is kind of dismissive, like he is still the most supportive figure in yeah. her life. Yeah. But that's that the point. thing. Yeah. I don't think it's dismissive though. He's like, you don't have any real problems, but yeah, you have problems. They're just not, you know. Well, I mean, it's kind of true as well. Like, mm. it, not about the problems. I mean, when he says, "I can't help you," yeah, because I feel like maybe he knows that you Ooh, know, yeah. to, as a fellow musician, yeah, at least you can kind of vent and have that creativity I, and I think and it's a nice mirror fun. to what Marge says later it's like I yeah. can't help you but I can be there with you mm. and those uh, are the two people that make her smile exactly and episode. that makes all the difference in the world the other thing is also during the Bleeding Gums Murphy bit we cut back to Marge having this dream and Homer having his dream and they're kind of talking oh I don't know what's wrong with Lisa she's Bart's such a pest and he always we're always paying attention to him and Maggie needs all this attention and meanwhile our little Lisa's just growing up and Homer's like ooh so it's an underwear thing oh, <laughs> yes <laughs> but again I love that it's a joke but it's him trying but just he doesn't have the complexity to understand it and not from a realm of being lazy or stupid from a realm of i just can't i don't get it well enough to be even be able to try yeah claire what's a moment from this episode that stands out to you for better or worse well you covered the big scene you covered the entirety of bleeding gums and everything he does and the underwear scene (laughs) and the underwear scene yeah we might get through the review just in the better or worse section (laughs) yeah to be honest look that's not a particularly jam-packed episode with major events happening Mm. but i like the slow pacedness of it i'm not sure if this would have been done before but the prank mo's prank whether that was Uh, the first mo's prank or not it wasn't Jacques Strap. (laughs) But that was also another nice little moment of heart before then where Marge is pacing the kitchen, worried about Lisa, doesn't know what Mm. to do. Homer comes in and then Bart comes in and she's like, Bart, you are being nice to her, Mm. aren't you? He says, no, I've been fine. Like, I've not done anything. She goes, you do love her, don't you? He's like, oh, (laughs) you know it. He knows it. (laughs) I know it. Why do we have to say it? Don't make me say it. And it's little things like that where I really enjoy, you know, the Simpsons kids being kids. So yeah. You know, human, Bart being 10 years old, yeah. you know. And the fact that he genuinely does go and try to, like, cheer her up in the best way that he understands. You know, I'm sad. Something that makes me laugh is tormenting Mo. Yeah. You know, yeah. let's do this. Even though it doesn't, like, work for Lisa, yeah, I, I'm still props to Bart. And especially because he essentially got punished for no reason and got made to do the vacuuming just yeah. because Lisa's yeah. sad. Because so Homer's like, hmm, Bart, go do the vacuuming. I don't know how to deal with this. Go yeah. with what you know. Go with what yeah. you know. <laughs> yeah, that's Punish right. the boy. How about you, Danny? What's a moment from this episode, better or worse, or out to do it to do? I really want to say the Jordan bit where, like, Marge gives her big speech at the end. Yeah, we'll talk about that again. I think I will, actually. <laughs> he really sort of focused on her good speech and how, how much she learned, and she was like, I'm just going to ride this with you. I was really struck by her telling it to Lisa, and Lisa being like, I'm not sure this is okay, but I'll try it for you, Mom. Of course I'll smile for you, Mom. And she goes out, and she does try it, and it works, and the kids are like, oh, I thought you were weird but that's a really nice smile you're so lovely maybe later you can do my homework maybe later you can do my homework hey you want to come around to my place and she's like look i'm making friends it's working you can do my homework for you and and fucking sergeant leroy being like oh now lisa there won't be any more creativity in my music (laughs) class will there Mm -hmm. she hated it she was hating every minute but she knew that her mom was still in the car and she thought okay you know this is and that her mom could see that and recognize it for what it was that her mom could see boys suddenly showing an interest in her inviting her around and be like upset about the oh this isn't healthy wait a second this isn't going well that was pretty insightful for her i think marge saw bits of little marge in that yeah yeah maybe when she got like the easy bake oven and like she was just making Mm. cookies for her sisters and stuff like people taking advantage of her and she she doesn't want that worked while her sisters smoked and smoked (laughs) yeah exactly hey elliot what was the moment for better or worse that stood out to you oh man i'm surprised no one else picked up on this but Super Slugfest! Ding yeah. <laughs> I love this B story. I don't know what else to say. Like, It looks like the most complicated game because you play it with like one joystick and one button. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, how Jordan the fuck? How are yeah. they doing all the moves? Like, there must be like double tap the joystick to like dodge or something. If you're something. pulling away and tap the button, it blocks. If yeah. you pull away and don't tap, it dodges. Like, how do you do the special move where you literally punch someone's head off? It's not easy, Ken. Yeah. It's not easy. Uh, yeah. Fatality. Up, up, down, down, left, right, left, I, right, A. Because there's no B. <laughs> I like how it was KO because, like, you'd hope that severing your head is a KO. Like, yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah. there's not much better you can I do. I mean, in this generation, yeah, because they're all, oh, I'm decapitated. I can't come to work. <laughs> Kids these days. Millennials. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> Why don't you go blog about it? Ugh. Born with a silver spoon and no head. Um, <laughs> despite it being an amazingly sophisticated game for the primitive controls and for yeah. the time, which like I'm assuming they're sort of paralleling Punch Out or something. Yeah, like I that. assume it was. Yeah. Yeah. Just also from an animation perspective, you know, this is still early Simpsons, but I think this was at times a pretty gorgeous episode. I mean, yeah. we were yeah. like making fun of the intro and it's like, what the fuck yeah. is with that? Mo looks like an inflated frog head. <laughs> <laughs> like, and like more the, so. <laughs> and the backgrounds are literally just like a building which is like a rectangle which has been divided yeah. into eight. Yeah. And that's yeah. like the windows. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But I got to say the animation on the video game here, like yeah. the digitization oh, like was really yeah. clever. Gorgeous. They drew Someone each of those up. pixels individually by yeah. hand. <laughs> Live in front of a studio audience. Someone went and programmed an entire game. Yeah. <laughs> I was thinking about it from a very early Simpsons episode as well. The game was quite violent. Like, there's a lot of blood yeah. and, like, blood dripping. And every time he got, like, smacked, there was, like, not sweat, but, like, Teeth blood going, like, yeah. going yeah. out blood and everything. Out. I'm like, yeah. that's probably why early Simpsons didn't like it. <laughs> yeah. All these reasons and more that we were saying, this is, like, the antithesis of the 80s sitcom. Yeah. I think it was yeah. 1990. So, yeah. was. This is pre Mortal Kombat. Was it? Okay, I was about to say when was Mortal Kombat out? I think yeah. it was like 92. 92. Yeah. Just aside from the animation as well, just the how the whole story played out of Homer getting insecure about being beaten by his son at the video game and then when he was up in bed with Marge and just going... It was a weird thing when I was able to beat my father at things and then Bart experienced that at age four. <laughs> it's yeah. just it's inevitable, really. That's why all parents out there remember, cheat at at least one game so you always win. Mm. <laughs> Play count. How many times before today do you think you've seen this episode? You know what? Season one, I never owned on DVD. Maybe a couple of times when it was on TV, but I don't think since then. Oh, wow. Um, yeah. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this as broadcast either. So, like, I'm going to say maybe five, but I mean, oh, outside wow. of that, I know it's going to be like 40,000 for you, Elliot, but I haven't seen this for like 96 years. I've seen it a lot, actually. I don't yeah. know why. I just feel like I have seen it 30, 40 times. Yeah, I'm on that boat. I've... Definitely seen it a 30 years of repression's worth. Mm. Yeah, I've seen it 40,000 times. I knew it. Wackiness, was this particularly wacky episode of The Simpsons? No, it wasn't. No. Not really. I'm trying to think of some wacky things. I I mean, apart from Homer going to an arcade and like paying a super cool kid (laughs) while barking like a dog in (laughs) order to learn. You got a deal, (laughs) Fido. Yeah. To learn how to play a game, you know? The little kid being Howie, who was played by Susan Blue, who you might remember, who played RC in Transformers. Of course. Mm. Oh, was RC the cute one? Hot Rod's babe girlfriend? I don't know. I didn't even know if I was pronouncing it correctly. RC. It's spelled A-R-C-E-E. Yeah. Yeah, That'd be RC. RC. Yeah, like remote control. It's like a play on that. (laughs) So clever. She was a babe. Yeah, arsy. You got a thing for robots in disguise? <laughs> <laughs> robots in disguise. <laughs> What's the <ball? laughs> Hey, yo. Yeah, look, I'm skewing my notes. I don't really see anything. I mean, how often do food fights really happen? Is that kind of wacky? Have you ever been in a food fight? I never have. On American so... TV all the time. Yeah, so... but I wonder if it's like one of those things that's just depicted. But do they actually happen? Well, the way Lisa was talking, it was a daily occurrence. Mm. Yeah. Tell you what, go to a cafeteria, yell food fight, start throwing, see what happens. <laughs> <laughs> Let's try it now. Food fight! Oh, there's I've no... i got f- the empty ice from my cup, so... <laughs> that's that a, a pen. pen throw it Eat it! <laughs> that's food. Wow, that's tiny. It looks like one of those bullet vibrators. Wait, is it? No, it, well, I mean, anything's a dildo if you're brave enough. Um, <laughs> Ew. <laughs> Take it back. <laughs> it's a space pen. I always wanted you to go into space, space pen. pen. Yeah, this isn't a wacky episode at all. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I guess Lisa wandering out and hanging out with a jazz man, but I don't know. It was all plot-based humour. Yeah. They weren't a particularly wacky show in the first they season, weren't. I They were very feel. grounded. Uh, I got something wacky to talk about. Here we go. No, I'm saying, no, I'm saying. The placement, like the groupings of the orchestra and their, <laughs> and their seating arrangement. <laughs> Jordan's in the corner. <laughs> Jordan's they had a the triangle corner. sitting in the front row. The percussion goes at the back. What is going on in this room? Jordan's in the orchestra. It's all over the place. <laughs> I don't want also, to that orchestra. Also, Largo is like the worst conductor ever. He wasn't even like on beat at all with his waving. Oh, and he's counting. 
five, six, seven. I guess it's like TV, you know, like you don't say the eight because you start recording at that point. <laughs> no, they're doing no, like a, an abstract remix of My Country Tis of Thee in seven, eight. It yeah. was very on, on point. My Country Tis of Thee. There you go. Sweet Sweet land of liberty. liberty. (laughs) Let's work on this. New car caviar four star home soon. (laughs) I'll think about football team. (laughs) Fucked it up entirely. Fucked it up entirely. Fucked it up entirely. (laughs) And how about the heart? What else have we got to say about that? I think we've got it all out of our system. Yep. (laughs) We really burned that bridge early. I think the bits at the start with Lisa just... Yeah, just being, staring. Yeah, good being point. Being depressed. Mm. Sad. Like, well, it is kind of wacky that they just continue playing dodge. Like, once She's you get the only hit... one that's meant to be dodging, and yeah. they're all pummeling over yeah, Once you get balls. hit once, you're out. Like, why were they just letting her sit there and just constantly just wailing on her with dodgeball? Cheer her a, up. A bit of inconsistency, because I thought it was called bombardment. Yeah. <laughs> We haven't actually talked about like the intro moments as well with Lisa moping around the house and just like, oh, what joy is a cupcake going to bring in this uh, winter morn? A simple so cupcake goth. will bring me no pleasure. Yeah. Oh, and then like Bart and Homer not reading the situation. It's like, just high five. We get cupcakes. Who Woo-hoo! cares? Which I think was maybe a little too flowery and poetic for, I don't know. No, see, I like this. I have notes mm. about this because... I was just like, oh, the Simpsons used to be like highbrow kind yeah, of, yeah. because there were several points where the language used was much more. Florid. Yes. For example, even the chalkboard gag, I will not instigate revolution, <laughs> instigate, right? And then even when Homer's running around looking for his keys, Marge turns to him and says, mm. you'd lose your head if it wasn't securely fastened to your neck. Like, that's pretty posh <laughs> for the Simpsons. No, no. But I, think... I love it. I love it. Yeah. Even um, going back to Largo and one of the beginning moments where Lisa's too sad to play the shitty song that everybody else is playing and she mm. starts playing the blues and he's like stop that stop that and it's like no 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 I am playing the American song you know I'm playing for the Iowa farmers mm. that yeah. you know are in the drought I'm playing for the West Virginia miners West Virginia yeah. miners and the homeless family sleeping out of their car exactly and he goes none of those unpleasant people will be at the recital next week <laughs> oh my god I just I know it's a bit snobby but I love this snobby ass language I love it <laughs> this is at the heart of Lisa's depression that she sort of feels the weight of the world on her shoulders and it's like she's feeling detached because there's so much suffering in the world and who is she and what can she do? The impotence of life in suburbia isolated from the tragedy of existence. She's having an existential crisis. Yeah. Normally you don't have that until you're at least like in your 20s. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Have you all seen the video of that little black girl in America who's lying there being like nothing's permanent like her older sister is recording her and going like what are you talking about and she's like Nothing's permanent. Not even that tattoo you've got. And she's like, why not? Because you're not permanent. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> and I'm Ooh. like, that's it. That little Ooh. girl, she's Lisa. <laughs> like, she is too Ooh. smart for her age kind of kid that's like, we need more of. Yeah. And the last thing I want to say about the heart before we move on from the heart question is Maggie's love of the TV. Yes. I yes. Was. <laughs> Come to the one you love the most. Yeah. I love that Lisa is kind of like gives up like, go on, go to Bart. And she's just like, actually, <laughs> straight to the TV. <laughs> she looked beyond the glitter. She looked beyond the substance and she found television. Yeah. The way she's like just hugging it and with her eyes closed and she's so happy. Yeah. 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 It's still warm because it's one of those CRTs. Uh, yeah. 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 I think those that's one of these. Oh, does the crackle. Yeah. <laughs> Timeless Simpsons moments for me. Oh, that, yeah. That's an iconic Simpsons I moment. I completely forgot what episode that was in. Yeah. 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 But I've never that forgotten bit. that. Yeah. But ultimately, though, guys, did this feel like an episode of The Simpsons? All the season one episodes, even the kind of garbagey ones, they are what makes the rest of The Simpsons. Yeah. You know, this is them taking the time to set up the characters. Like, even the little scene with Homer losing his keys and Bart just following him around eating his cereal, <laughs> like, shit stirring constantly, mm-hmm. like, colder, <laughs> colder, <laughs> ice cold. He's like, oh, you know where my keys are? I was like, nope, describing your breakfast. <laughs> like, what are you little shit? But yeah. it's making the characters who they are, you know? Yeah, well, it's tough because it's building what they will be. So it's that foundation that the characters you know and love will get constructed it on so i feel like though definitely other season one episodes and even some season two episodes where even then you're like oh this is like before this character is really established but this really feels like all of them are exactly what you know from like seasons three to ten or and beyond well even homer like a couple of podcasts ago when we were doing dead putting society one of my big gripes with that was homer was just an angry dick bag for the vast majority of the episode this shows his complexity and like it shows him trying as a father and yeah so yes or no would you watch this one again 
Yeah, definitely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Definitely. We're going to watch again. We're going to put it in the playlist. What playlist is this going? Sad. Sad episodes. Jazz clubs and bleeding gums. Yeah, man. Episodes at the jazz hole. Or just music episodes, music themed episodes of The Simpsons. Sure. You were talking about Marge pulling her hair out, the Sherry Bobbins episode. Yeah. Little Margie episodes. Oh, yeah. yeah. Like when she's getting uh, chased with a plane. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> and the Easy Bake Oven. Yeah, the Easy that. Bake Oven. Mo she- pranks. My prank calls. Yeah, mm-hmm. actually, I do want to know what that playlist is. Vidya Games. The Vidya Game playlist. Mm. Pair this with Bone Storm. Yeah, and uh, Marge Gamer. Oh, uh, yeah. No. <laughs> that <episode sucks. laughs> it's a playlist. You don't get to choose. It just has to fit the theme. Only if you agreed that you would watch it again. Yes. What about Bart versus Homer episodes? Mm-hmm. You know? Oh, well, yeah. I've got a grudge with the old man sort of thing, and it becomes a big competition between the two of them. It could also be Bart bonding with Homer episodes yeah, as well. Yeah, because yeah. It's like, it was versus, but it was actually quite a friendly versus. Even Bart is like, man, come on. I'm sick of beating you. Yeah. <laughs> well, it wasn't to Homer. Like, she has that dream. It's like, oh, come on. I'm, go easy on you. You're old man. He's like, I am going easy on you. You just suck so much. Yeah. Too You're so bad old. Sports. <laughs> uh, sports. So, Jordan, what would you change? You can't take away much. Mm. I guess the only thing... <laughs> I don't want to inject more jokes that would take away from the emotional impact of the episode. Mm. I don't want to fix it. I'd rather enjoy it as it is. Fair enough, BT. I would inject more jokes because it is a bit... Like I said, I didn't really write a lot of notes until we got to Bleeding Gums Murphy and then he's Mm. half my notes because all the funny bits are in his part. It's just a little bit slow paced and that's something maybe you can attribute to when it was made. There's also bits that kind of float around for a bit and don't go anywhere. Like, yeah, Homer reacting to all these places to get destroyed except for Barney's bowl of armor. And you're like, this feels irrelevant, but okay, fine. Just, yeah, just for that bit of pacing and a bit of more jokesness for uh, me. How about you, Claire? What would you like to change? To be honest, nothing. And yet I agree with all the points previously as well. <laughs> it's just that I think the episode as it is, is perfectly fine because it's not the fully developed Simpsons. Mm. I think that's also, though, because later episodes, the plot lines are really, really complicated and they just get more and more complicated and messy as the seasons go, whereas this is a really simple plot line. Lisa is sad and her family doesn't know what to do about it. There's not a lot of jokes, you know, that you can shoehorn into that without changing the focus of the episode, I think. So as it stands, I wouldn't change it, but I also recognize that the pacing is so different from later episodes that it does feel like you're kind of going, well, when's the plot going to start? When's the plot going to start? And I think when you get caught up in that mentality, you miss what's actually happening, which is the character development. And I like that sort of thing. Yeah. Danny? I could sort of sit in Lisa's descent into depression like, it didn't start because of anything. And that's the way depression is. That's fine. Mm-hmm. But also, I feel like it would have been nice to sort of see Marge have some more failed attempts at reaching, at connecting with her. Like, I really like that big one of her passing on her mother saying, bottle it up and smile. That was... Yeah, before that, maybe have... She does, like, oh, why don't you have a hot bath? That cheers me up. But maybe, yeah. like, a nice yeah. bowl of ice cream. Or why don't we go for a walk or something like that? To... I think it would have been a good chance to show her looking, like, frazzled and worried, trying to... You know when when she's trying too hard mm-hmm. to nurture and mother things better? Could have been interesting. No, you know what? Nah, I'm good. I'm good. <laughs> yeah, it's hard for me to say as well because I totally agree with what was said earlier is that, yeah, the first 10 minutes of this episode is like, what is this actually about? And yeah, it was mm. hard for me to do the plot summary. And it's not really The Simpsons that we'd come to know and love, but I really fucking appreciate this episode mm-hmm. still. And I appreciate that they took their time to build it up. And, you know, in doing my research, I saw, like, from the outset, they were like, okay, six episodes in, we've got to do a Lisa-focused episode, you know, because Bart and Homer and are going to always pull most of the focus from mm-hmm. the stories. And it's like, okay, well, let's focus on the forgotten middle child. Yeah. And I felt like this is such a forgotten middle child episode, yeah. you know? While I do have some criticisms of the episode in terms of the pacing, it's just I really don't know how to fix it because I appreciated mm. how it did build so the other guest star of the episode we had miriam flynn who was playing miss bar oh so that must have been the gym teacher that wasn't miss pummel horse okay you might know her as cousin catherine from national lampoon's vacation and some various sequels she also played grandma Longneck in the land before time (laughs) the first one all 14 million of them (laughs) 
Yeah, there are more Land Before Times than there are Simpsons episodes at then this stage. Then there were yeah. years between now and the dinosaurs. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, do you have any other notes? I think this whole scenario could have been avoided if Lisa stopped using glum toothpaste. <laughs> <laughs> yep, little side gag being glum toothpaste. That was the source of all our woes. Yeah. Oh, it's like, Lisa, God. no wonder you're feeling so sad. That's why, you know, like when she's happy later, it's like, yeah, the toothpaste is finally worn off. The last drop is off her tooth. It takes your plaque and your happy feelings. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Oh, but do you want plaque? No. Talking of animation, I'm assuming that she just walks onto the tree branch and into the tree house mm-hmm. but it just looked like she just walked across the air yeah. into the tree house believe it or how. not she was walking on air oh. Oh. This guy. checkmate podcast Hi. over <laughs> i never thought i could feel so, so leave free. a message at the beep sorry <laughs> i liked the line that marge had was get away from the jazz man and everything and then it's nothing personal i just fear the unfamiliar yeah that was <laughs> i like that she earnest. recognized he was a jazz man yeah. <laughs> get away from that jazz man well he's mean he's got that five o'clock shadow and yeah. just a saxophone strapped around him i guess step probably. away from the jazz man that rusty um, old horn this is obviously a former renovated his bar to how it is today and yep. renovated his barney yeah exactly <laughs> Yeah, and the song over the credits was, like, interesting because you don't, like, with the shots of the city and everything, you don't see the... I can't remember other episodes where they, they kind of do it. They pay for jazz, they'll get that yeah. jazz. Yeah, no, it was really cool. I yeah. liked it. And they actually used the saxophone improv over the DVD menu disc for season nine. Oh, nice. I know, because I've fallen asleep watching that DVD many times. <laughs> <laughs> BT, any other notes? It's okay, Dad. I know you meant well. Well, thanks for knowing I meant well. <laughs> I think that does it for me, though. Claire? I like the line where uh, Lisa and Bleeding Gums, you know, are first playing on the bridge. Like, oh, the blues aren't about making you happy. They're about making other people feel worse. So <laughs> and I making like a one. couple of bucks while you're at it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's a very down-to-earth dude. And I also like that he plays Lisa's song at the end, you know, yeah. in the jazz club. This is from... Yeah, it's like the final validation of her feelings mm. to have someone she now uh, looks up to playing her music. Yeah, and all the other musicians are totally grooving on it as yeah. well. But the part that I wanted to mention was, um, you know, I've got a bratty brother and Bart's just smiling and Marge is like, yeah, I did give her a cupcake away. My dad thinks he belongs, but he belongs in a zoo. And he's like, hmm wait what (laughs) and like lisa in the foreground is just like she knows it she knows she's been a shit and she's feeling happy now i like that well yeah because since marge had her big speech that lisa just had this big dumb smile on her face that just didn't leave for the rest of the episode which is yeah amazing i think it was nice that the whole family went to Mm -hmm. the jazz bar i mean i think like usually you would see like homer and bard or something going oh not a crappy jazz bar or something but But they were there and having fun yeah nice moment of solidarity yeah oh they were getting into it you know you heard homer tapping on the thing and danny any other notes yes i do have one other note e flat (laughs) (laughs) i've had a couple of nights where i woke up the next morning and my keys were still in the lock outside of my front door (laughs) really yeah yeah dude (laughs) oh shit (laughs) you guys can attest to this yes (laughs) them feels bro i hear you homer (laughs) <laughs> it's the hardest place to look for because you go through your house, you turn it upside down, you check all your pockets, you check your bags, you check that place where you're not supposed to put your keys and you always chuck them there on the mm-hmm. way home. And it's time for my final notes. The moon looked beautiful in this episode. The moon? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, the yeah. overexposed blue and just, they used it just beautifully throughout I, this episode. It was like a, like a kind of a halo around mm. Bleeding Gums' head like he was Lisa's saviour. From the depression. Ooh, I love the symbolism. Yes. Yeah. Oh, so good. When Marge unplugs the video game. By the way, so unfair. Mm -hmm. That's something that totally could have waited. Well, that was the one thing about this episode where basically all the adult women had no understanding of video games in this. Yeah. You know, the homie yeah. getting told off by that mom. You're an adult man. You should be ashamed of yourself. And um, well, yeah, even Marge Homer, he's like, oh, I'm doing laundry. Sure you are. I think I hear my wife calling. <laughs> you should be doing laundry. Yeah. <laughs> well, he just knows that that kid, Howie, was it? Yes. Yeah, he's like unbeatable. Don't yeah. even bother. You wasted your quarters. But yeah, when Marge does unplug the video game, I've always had Homer's, oh no! Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my game, my beautiful game. My one chance at history. It is time to rank this thing. 
This is going to be difficult. I'm going to go last. BT, you're going first. Oh, thank All right, goodness. I'll make it easy. Gold, it is very, very good. It has moments of absolute cubic, but the overall kind of pacing and the kind of... I don't think really got a good laugh out loud until uh, you play pretty well for someone with no real problems. That was my first and only real solid laugh in this one. It is still a comedy series, even though this is building a foundation of character and also discovery of what The Simpsons is. It's still very good. For me, it was kind of a bronze until Bleeding Gums, and that made it a silver, and then that speech from Marge made it a gold, but that's as high as it got. All right. Claire. Okay. If you look at Cubic Zirconia as what I feel would be essential watching, Mm -hmm. and not necessarily the highest quality episode, but still essential, you know what? I'm going to go out on a limb. I'm going to say Cubic. Wow. I went in here thinking gold, right? It's a very, very good episode. It's very solid, but it does have problems. Mm -hmm. It's not, you know, the funniest Laugh Out Loud episode. However, if you're talking like essential Simpsons, I don't think you can miss that last half with bleeding gums. I don't think you can miss the scene between Marge and Lisa. You have to see it. Yeah. You know, you have to see this episode just for those things. It's not the perfect episode, mm. but it's still essential watching for me. Jordan? Like the heart in the episode is ultra cubic diamond, you know, like it's amazing. <laughs> Diamonds are worthless. <laughs> Cubics are <coniers. laughs> And the jokes are like more silver which does make me think like gold. I get what you're saying, Claire, about like it is essential. It's a really high gold, but I think it's just getting held back a little bit for me. So I think I have to go gold. Danny? I think Claire's right. I'm going to go cubic. Yes! I think you're right. Cubic is about what's essential. And that Lisa Marge stuff is essential. Like that is a definitive moment for them. And like the, 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 the Maggie TV part, that is definitive part of the Simpsons. It's smaller, <laughs> but that's still iconic of what the Simpsons is to me. That one scene there has lasted 30 years of Simpsons and still comes to mind when I'm just like, oh, what's the Simpsons? Ah, it's the bit where Maggie loves the TV, you know? But yeah, that Lisa and Marge stuff, it's powerful and emotive and current and contemporary and an important lesson today as it was 30 years ago. QZ, friend. What about you, Elliot? Yeah, deciding vote. Quebec Zirconia. Quebec The Zirconia. rarest of all. He's going to call <laughs> up next week. <laughs> While we're all trying to sleep. <laughs> I've got you on a five-way conference call. No, look, I, I'm going gold with this one. Like, I thought before we did this episode today that this would be a very high silver for me because there are... I'm only saying pacing problems in compared to Arthur Simpson's episodes, but honestly, as it stands on its own, the pacing sort of rewards it at the point of when the Marge speech occurs. And Exactly. Yeah. Sorry, I have to just like jump in and I totally agree because it's within that episode, not looking at other Simpsons, you know, the pacing builds up to a really solid climax, you yeah. know, and the resolution is very satisfying, so... Yeah, and honestly, for an episode that I thought from before we came in here today that was probably going to get silverish, like, I thought maybe even some of you would have went bronze, but I am actually very proud of this episode to be averaging out into a shiny gold, and this will be the first shiny gold from season one, Wow! but it'll be joining other such episodes as... Homer and Apu, when Apu comes to live with the Simpsons. It happened. <laughs> Team Homer, which BT we did with JTE. Ah, oh, nice. All these initial named people. <laughs> Lisa the Iconoclast, when uh, this is in the Jebediah yep. Field. Yep. Give me the five. <laughs> five, Marge. Give me the five. Give me the five. Give me the five. five, 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 five. The two Nahasapima Petalons, when Apu marries Manjula. Mm-hmm. Wild Barts Can't Be Broken, which we did in our another episode. We did it in another episode. <laughs> the bloodening. And E-I-E-I Doll, the Tamako episode. Mm. Yeah, this one's in very good company. I'm, I'm actually so damn surprised and uh, happy Delighted. for this episode. Yes. Good. For this one. Good for you, episode. All right, so we are severely over time. Woohoo! But mm. if you have anything you want to recommend, this is lightning round. You have a minute max. Claire, go. A Gretzko. It's a really good easy to get into anime that's currently streaming on Netflix. If you are a 25 to 45 year old woman that is struggling with office life and putting up with everybody else's bullshit and also you like really cute shit. Yeah. Sounds watch oddly it. specific, but it's pretty universal. Yeah. I am none of those things, but I can, I can understand. You it. love I cute shit. Feels. What are you talking about? Jordan, what would you like to recommend? Sorry. Okay. If you have a switch, I can recommend from an Australian developer, 
from a game called Death Squared, um, which is like a little puzzle game. It's a guy testing AI with an AI, and it's him and the AI talking to each other, and you are playing the AI that you're testing. Basically, it's you got to get your red guy on a red dot, and it's cute, and it's two, three, or four player. There's lots of spikes and traps, and it's fun, so do it. It is fun, but you'll hate your friends. Danny! I finished Final Space recently, a Netflix cartoon. Oh, oh yeah? Yep. These guys thought it was garbage. Absolute garbage. And That's not the whole wrong. Story. They were just dead wrong. I thought it was pretty <laughs> clever. It was gripping. There was something weird about it that I can't quite put my mm-hmm. finger on. I think it's partly it's that they don't have a lot of background music, which is sort of a 2001 thing. It gives it that spacey vibe, but it also means the place feels, feels empty. empty sometimes. Yep. Also, there's the fact that the main character has this sort of balance of false bravado that makes him feel like a fake actor, sociopath kind of character. I really liked the show. I thought the protagonist, I thought the writers thought they thought he was way more appealing than he actually was. Mm. BT. Soft recommendation to the uh, Amazon series American Gods. It's interesting, but I've also read the book, so I kind of can't tell what it would be like for someone who doesn't know what's going on yeah, if yeah. it would just be annoying. Because I feel like the season one climax is a bit there. I've also been playing Celeste, which you've recommended before on the Switch. Mm. Quite Ooh. good. Not as good as Hollow Knight. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> this is like seven episodes running with Hollow Knight. <laughs> it's good. It's in my top games ever. <laughs> oh, wow. And my recommendation is Shut Up and Take My Podcast. It's a Futurama podcast, which people... It's episode against episode in bloody glorious gauntlet battle. So, yeah, they go season by season, figuring out which is the best one of each season. And they're a really funny bunch. I especially recommend it to all of us because, yeah, I feel like they have a very similar sensibility and sense of humor to us. And, yeah, it's a great Futurama podcast. So we have to pit ourselves against them in a glorious no, and bloody battle we for get the them best. On side. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys, that has been episode 114 of the podcast live from a fucking castle. Let's get the hell out of here. That's been Claire Double R. Thanks, Elliot. That's been Jordan Frost. Fare thee well. That's been Danny. I'm Danny Rosewell. Rosewell. I'm Danny Rosewell. (laughs) That's been BT Callaway. Oi. And I'm Elliot J. O'Neill. That's all the mustard in the castle. You want to take that again? No. <laughs> Perfect. Thank you for listening to The Simpsons Index Podcast, which is also an online spreadsheet available at thesimpsonsindex.com. You can chat to us online at facebook.com slash thesimpsonsindex or at simpsonsindex on Twitter and Instagram. And now please stay tuned for the bonus scenes. Okay, so I was thinking that we really sort of talked good about... <laughs> Superman, Superman talks good. good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want to fork you like an animal. Wait, why can't I say fork? (laughs) You know I mean fork, not fork, right? (laughs) You are a messy bench that loves drama, and I am so into it. (laughs) And we're back. Hi, we've just watched episode 35 of season 74 um, (laughs) of the Seinfeld Index. (laughs) The Globulons (laughs) attack. (laughs) The Simpsons Index of the future when the Simpsons become Seinfeld in season 48. I don't know. (laughs) all right we are back and we just watched our classic and final episode of episode 144 uh, fuck what <laughs> how many episodes have we done up here i got a lot of episodes and you're all gonna hear about it <laughs> i would have liked that bit more oh shit i should save that further what would you change you uh, hang on let me now. try the just earliest thing again <clears throat> What would you change about this episode? <laughs> Am I <laughs> here? What the fuck was that? <laughs> when everything happens to Elliot. <laughs> I'm still working out the kinks. You know that episode? <laughs> what would you change about it? <laughs> it's, it's Elliot's sling blade. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I sure like them French fried potatoes. I did like the way that Mark Zuckerberg delivered the line. Um, Don't oh, fuck God. with the Zuck. No, it was... <laughs> You know the most Aussie thing that I just thought of just then yeah. is that like Ruth. Say it Aussie. <laughs> Ruth is like the Rachel Griffiths to <laughs> Marge's Tony Collette. Fuck <laughs> 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 ah, that. You broke him. Yeah. Who knew? Who knew that's what it would take? I had no idea. You take a photo of Elliot breaking. It's to make just a random Muriel's wedding just quirk. Like, out I of nowhere. know exactly and not a yeah. fucking clue what oh, you're talking geez, about. Oh, jeez Louise. <laughs>
Oh shit! You um, know why don't you just fuck off, Chuck? That's that's Ruth Powers. Yeah, yeah. you terrible Nero. Shiver me timbers. Yeah, um, that's great. A matchstick maker. A matchmaker. A matchstick maker. <laughs> Someone's gonna make him. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, what would you change? Oh shit, man! Like fucking. Um, I, I, you know, mm, you, mm, 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 oh, fuck, mm. fuck. Um. I would Add put- more fuck to yeah. the episode. Yeah. More fuck. <laughs> Simpsons porn parodies. <laughs> yeah. Gore like, right before I wrote... Oh, shit, I can't think of Eggs, the other Gore toast. That'll do. Mm. <laughs> was not on a menu I <laughs> saw once. start the way, the Gurgitch way, with eggs, bacon, bacon and toast. Eggs, bacon, and to- <laughs> toast. Toast. Um, well, i got to speed that up there. <laughs> yeah. And that's what makes this episode so good yeah going against that sitcom trope of like you know dad fixes everything and the mm. kid has a very fixable problem as well like yeah this boy was oh, mean yeah. to me well you know don't get let him get to you well, like now, mm. you know all bullies are cowards all you have to do is stand up to him and everything will be fine at the end of 30 minutes well, you try yeah. talking to him maybe you'll find that you guys have a lot more in common than you think yeah, you're gonna find you... the biggest bully in the schoolyard and knock him out <laughs> 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 no jordan jordan that's prison prison, that's prison. <laughs> prison yard schoolyard there's literally no difference. I will be teaching my child prison rules. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about that the, the other way. Colonel is like one of the worst spelt words, uh, right? It's ridiculous. It's French, though. Colonel. Anyway. Colonel. 